each year, each year, there are new ways of doing things. And, and the thing we've stayed ahead of everybody, uh, in my opinion, is by changing, by listening, by paying attention. Because, you know, we can all get cloudy, especially when you get old, old part like I am. You, 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 you think you got the, you ain't got the fucking answers now. Because somebody's going to come up with something. Now you got to come up with something. You, you see what I mean? And so I've been in this 12 years, and I would say that 11 of the 12 years, we have been in the top three rushing teams in the National Football League, and we have been the top guy eight of the 12 times. And that's two different teams with about nine different running backs. So it, there is something here. We've had some quarterbacks that can really run. We've had some quarterbacks that can't run. We've had ever conglomerate. Uh, the crew I have right now would be rated somewhere between 25th and 30th on the offensive line of the National Football League. And we led the league two years in a row here with the worst lineman in the league. I mean, down here the worst. So I know we're on the we're on the path, and so we're constantly trying to find something. We don't need a patent on the back. What we need is to be better next year. Right, right. So you intrigue me because I I set all the standards uh, off of of this concept. I ask I ask in our system that I have that presence in some form or fashion. With this one behind that one, it's seven and a half to seven and three quarters yards. Now, I am intrigued with the possibility of them being here. Now, I will tell you, I am intrigued because of the human being I have right here, okay? And this guy can be off and he can be moving. He can be anything possible for the system to work. Now, we have a lot of two-back stuff, which I don't think is what you're interested in at all. Is that right? Do you, are you interested in having a fullback in front of that guy or beside that guy? We need a, a little bit. Okay. Completely well, well it is another whole world, okay? But it's where we start with. Fullback tight end. We start out with this as our base core. Right. First day teaching, okay? Now, you know what, Coach, I think we'd be, we'd be better off than one back if we can get there. <laughs> we'll be better off because... We have more big plays in one back than we do in two back. Because when we put one in there, what do they do? Defensively. They squeeze them down, right? It's another guy down the hole. So, shit. I mean, it, but we start there because we start with the concept that we would like to have the ability to run wide zone both ways. Okay, so it, 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 it doesn't confuse me to think in terms if I can get this guy set in that kind of circumstance. And the only reason I draw him in front of that guy is because I know the number of bad snaps is totally based on where the up foot of the quarterback is. The angle of the ball when his up foot never moves is so easy to catch and not have a bad snap. The minute you move that foot back, you help this, but you hurt that snap because that much off when I'm here compared to here is peanuts. That angle of trajectory is massive. Mm -hmm. And so I insist on that, that concept. What, do you, what, what depth do you put up? I don't know. You know, everybody differs. If I had mine, it'd be four, it'd be four yards, okay? But we get it at four and a half, and we start seeing them rock. Because they want to get into the drop because the drops are different, right? The quarterbacks and drops are different. And we, we, we run that system to run, but we have just evolved into the passing, I mean, the, uh, the total running concept out of it. And so now I don't know where this guy will line up. i got to find all that up because, remember, we got landmarks, right? Because he could be over here just as well. And we want the zone concept to be run out of, of those structures. So the first film I put up is out of this with the ability to go there or go there and the tight end could be on or off or moving. Okay, so, so you understand, it, it, it doesn't matter. And then we basically started with where's the, where's the force element? Where's, where is the eighth guy? From, from all our study, where is he? Because see, we see no seven in front. So we see none, zero. They don't play cover two does. They don't play quarter coverage even. 
There's one of them motherfuckers right there, or he's right there somewhere. <laughs> that's where he is. So if he's over there, we're coming over here. If he's over there, he's coming over here. But that's based on having this play. So what we're, what we're getting ready to talk about is how do we do the same concept without fucking all these guys up where there is no guy to block for the weak side concept. Mm -hmm. okay? Now that, that's where the reach come from. That's where the keeper comes from. That's where the nakeds come from. That's where, so we're stealing from you as you're stealing from us because we're pretty good at doing this this way, but we we may be opening up something in pro ball that has never existed, and we were very interested in it. So mm -hmm. I don't mind telling you that that's where we are. Question so far? Yeah, my question, coach, is just I'm just thinking that you know, having hurt going through this once with you, okay, is the best way for all of us in here to start, in your opinion, with a Two back mentality, just going through the base fundamentals of the play, and and, and and then working our way one back. Or is where's the best way for us to bring this thing and, and from soup to nuts and bring okay. it to it? We're about uh, our fullback played 54 percent of the snaps last year. Okay, so we are at a point where we have to choose, and he has to be the first one we start. But if I thought my percentage was 27% of the time, mm -hmm. then I'd start the other way. Yeah. I'm just telling you what I'd do. Okay? Now, we have evolved to this. Our fullback is not a fullback. Our fullback is a second or third runner. We no longer play a blunt player. We can't afford it. We don't get many. So what we can't understand is why there's a guy sitting over there on that fucking bench that's better than that fullback in that game. So when you see our fullback, you're not going to see a guy that's going to go stab Mike linebackers in the heart. Yeah. We're not looking for a 260-pound fucking slug. We're looking for a receiver and a guy that understands the same reads that this runner's learning so that he earns his keep as maybe he's a better pass protector. Maybe he's more like I can play a freshman here. I can play a rookie right here and have, I'll bet you, four or five times in that 12 if I have a veteran that can take just the, the, the third loans, where I get him off the field and he doesn't have to learn all that pickup shit, because that's hard. That's fucking hard. Well, I'm sure you got the same deal. You got one coming in, probably a better runner than anybody you got, and you say, we well, got to get him in there. Yeah, but how's he learn to pass protect? How's he learn all those rules? God damn, that's, that's hard. So, that, you know how we saw him? That's our fullback. <laughs> and, and then you got flexibility. So to answer your question, if I thought I was 45 to 50 or more, I'd start with a fullback because I feel comfortable doing it that way because I've done it that way. But if I thought I was going the other way, I'd start the other way. Well, just in terms of teaching for us, okay. yeah, here's where we are. Here's where we are. We have a guy. We basically put you know put this in out of the gun, but we have we have a guy that is a is a countable player for us. He's a fullback. He's a 225 pound guy. Catches the ball well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's kind of a hybrid. Kind of guy. He's got some running skills. We think we essentially put this play and we start using him as a kind of a movement guy mm -hmm. with this play. So you know, um, Some you know, yep. to give us some two back player. Okay. But he's a guy we feel like we got to have on the field in some capacity. You know what I mean? Not gotta, but okay. should have him on. So okay. we're kind of a blend. Okay. So for teaching purposes today, should we start with a movement kind of a guy? I, or? I, I, I wish I could answer your question. Okay. I think you're going to have to do that. Okay. I'm, I, I feel comfortable doing it either way, but I feel more comfortable starting with the fullback because that's how we do the concept. you got to remember that when I finish here, I will have covered, in, in our system, I will have covered all of these things, okay? And that's the beauty of what I teach and what we've been able to is... These systems require fullback, and our system doesn't change because we went, we're coming off the one yard line, or we got put the game away at four minutes. Yeah. See, that's what scares me about spread, because how do you then play nasty ball? It's raining, right. it's pouring, you're on the road, you got a fucking problem. You don't want to be checking plays. They're bringing shit at you, and you got to have them blocked, okay? So, in our big picture, we have to start the other way because this is our whole offense, and our whole offense only has 12 runs. That's all it has. It will not change. 
Because ours is predicated on two things. And everything you're going to hear today is going to be predicated. No negatives. If there is runs that are negatives, I don't give a fuck how good those good big ones were. Uh -uh, they're out here. We have led the league 11 of the 12 years and no negatives. Now, I, I don't mean none, because there's always going to be a few. But we want to be the bottom team in negatives. And the reason we want to be there is we want to play the game where it does not matter on first or second down what personnel we have on the field and whether we run or throw. It's irrelevant. It has no meaning for us. <clears throat> so if the run is a no negative, we never create third and real long. You see, so to throw on first and have an incomplete, we're going to take that puppy to third and six, third and five. We can keep, we can keep operating. You see, yeah. so we don't care. We don't care what the play is. I mean, I really don't give a shit. I, I really don't care because we're going to get somewhere in that half category. Uh, and then based on talent, we want the big play, the big explosion play. And that is usually all personnel, okay? Now, we have led that seven of those 12, and I wish that were higher. But the reason they didn't hire is because a lot of those years, we did not have a prime guy, okay? But that's a 20-yard run. If we, can, if we can lead in these two categories, to me, all that other shit takes care of itself. You know, now, our offensive coordinator, Greg, who's come, you know, has a great career and a great mind and understands, He's always talking about efficiency, efficiency. I say efficiency is bullshit. I want no negatives and I want big explosions. So when I set this trend, I know that I can lead the league in big explosions if I'm in one bag. But I'm going to have negatives. When I take this guy off the field, this other human being, who takes his place in reality? He's got to be smart enough to know who can block which guys. So you can't put a guy in there that ain't smart. I don't give a fuck how, how, how good he is. If he sends us over this way and there's more than we got, how do we block them fuckers? Now, if I got a fullback, I don't care. I have a system. If he's over here, I got a system. I don't give a shit what they are. I got a system, okay? But when he goes off the field, this guy has to run the show. Because I got nobody that can block the eighth guy now, right? I got nobody that can block him coming off the edges. So there's a constant war going on. You heard the little jab today, you know, because he'd like that tight end flexed. Well, that's great. If you're throwing the ball, I'm going to block that motherfucking edge, you know? I got a little problem here. That's, that's always an issue because this guy has to assume a role. Now, he's already spending how many hours in the classroom? A bunch. Just passing it. Now he's got to spend time. Really? Okay. One of the toughest things I think we're seeing is implementing where Steve knows, you know, coming in and teaching us with the two-back system, how the two marry together. Okay, okay. I will show and, you how to do and, that. And that, and maybe in, in teaching purposes, whichever you feel is the best to teach us first okay. and then have okay. teach us how to marry okay. together. I'm, I'm going to show you how, how I do it. And, and this is going to be a little confusing um, but it's the only way I know how to do it. And it, it's frustrating for Greg and some of our offensive coaches. It's frustrating for them because I can't see it the way they see it. I can only teach it the way I see it. And they get frustrated because I ask for certain things to be said or done, and they don't understand why that is, okay? But those things code to me how I'm going to do it. Well. I use just these terms, okay? This gives me a direction. And nobody has to use these, these numbers. These numbers are irrelevant, right? They have nothing. But, you know, we're even right and odd left. And the high digits are outside. I mean, that makes sense to me. And in order for nobody, because they don't call them this way. They just call a number. We have the ability to make this strong and this weak. Okay, so now I know it's to a tight end or away from a tight end. Does that, does that make sense? And not, not, not necessarily where he started, but where he's going to end up. So that the people know how to declare who they got. Because this is our whole world. It's, this is the hardest world there is. And then I need a term. And I must have seven or eight of those. 
And those terms could will tell me which which elements I have. That's how the linemen learn. Well, they don't like my terms. <laughs> they don't like them. And they would like them not there. But guess what? None of them fuckers know. They got the worst seat in the house. They're right up there. And big fucking gorillas across from them. All is bigger, bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. They're in the inside three are down stances. You know, generally my center runs the show. Tackles help him with calls. But we gotta we gotta have a verbiage. And I got the worst seat. Now, if the quarterback wants to go to the line of scrimmage and take over that role, that word, that's fine too. But how many of them want to learn all the things that they got? You know, that ain't that ain't necessarily what you want to head to too. So that doesn't answer the question. So I have just through the years had a pocket of words that told us what we're going to do. And those words run one and two back. So that some of them are inclusive only with two backs. Some of them are inclusive to one back. And they tell me who I spot and tell me if it's going weak or going strong. Okay? Does that, yeah, does that help you just a little bit? That's and this, this, this is the shit. Now, this is the real shit that if you're good at, this is how they can figure it out. Okay? So let, let's just start with the premise that we've, we've got some form of four down in here. Okay? Let, let's just say that they're the four down linemen. It could be three, four, two, which I'll, I'll take you through you know, in concepts. But generally speaking, we see a four down system. Is that true with you guys, or do you see more threes than fours? We see more three because of who we are to start. I got you. Now, as we've gone to this, we'll probably start going back to seeing more four down. Okay. <laughs> the reason the three is a problem for you is this world with this guy standing right there is a fucking disaster. Okay? So that's a, that's a telltale for us, too. That overrules all his weak side rules. He can't run the ball to that side. Okay? He, he can't run the ball. He doesn't want to run keepers. He doesn't want to run nakeds. He doesn't want to run... Because that guy can take him and hit him right now, and we've got nobody to block him. We have no human being left to block him. Uh, but if it's a four-man front, we still have the same designation problems. We've got to decide which guy is our guy. All right? So I not, notice I hadn't even put the rest of them up there. Because to me, that's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with it. If I'm in trips, three over there, in single here or double, two here and two over there. I just need a guy in location for me. Then I can parallel it with one and two backs with the teaching. I don't like the four wide system because I, I don't have the way for my guys to know he is or isn't there. I don't know who's blocking that back set. And that confuses my guys. So that's why we have a strong and weak term and a verbiage word. And there's a million of them. I shouldn't say million. There's, there's eight or ten. But there's three or four that tell me distinctly which is my guy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, if we start with a four-man front, we have the potential of three more people that could be there. Okay? We, we don't know. But there could be three more people. If, if they've got three and we're in one back, they got one more than we got, is the way we teach our concepts. So for us, that is always a mic concept for us, okay? And we automatically can look at that mic concept and know that we can go here, but we can't go there because we ain't got enough helmets to go there. Now, the minute this leaves with, say, double and goes out to here, you see, then we're fine. And so our designation of that player is the crucial word that tells us in strong and weak, whether we can. And of course, it could be that the formation is such that it's this way, right? And he's out there. It's the same deal. I got to know that person. If, if it's what we call base personnel, then we are in, in theory, my center's in a Mike declaration. And a Mike declaration, the way he's taught is this is the Mike backer. Hey, Brenda, this is. This is the Mike player that we practice against and we have a jersey on because they have base personnel on the field. And to me, I don't really care who else on our offense is out there because I don't make them learn that. I don't make them, all they need to know is strong and weak and they need to know whether we got enough helmets or which guys we're going to, okay? So for me, I, can, I, I know right now the term that tells me I have this guy instead of that one 
because that's no longer Mike. That's a term I have to be able to deal with. And that word quickly comes up, and that tells these they got that one, and these they got that one. If they're all in there, and this poor boy right here, he's got a soft stomach because we ain't got enough helmets. We can take the ball over there. We can take it over there, um, but we got to chase the backside guys because that's in a mic concept. But the very minute one of these guys leaves, I want to know, is he substituted for or not? Is it a DB that came in and a linebacker that left? Or is it their base seven-man front that, they, that you saw on film all week? I need to know that. Let me ask you just going Because back one has Mike, one does not have Mike. When you started with declaration of my jersey number by that. Okay. Say you get some kind of sub nickel package. Okay. Because of one back. This word goes out, and we're now dealing with two linebackers. We have the weak one or the strong one, and that's how they learn it. We, we still practice it with jersey numbers, but they're looking at it that the minute it's substituted package, we never might call it. It's nickel call. And that's off of your start, basically, from your center's head out. Exactly right. Week. Exactly right. And we do it with this term. Nickel, 19, weak, with a term. Nickel, 18, strong, with a term. So you tag in the nickel if you go to a one back. Well, no, not, not necessarily. Because remember, it, you, you may not know, did they sub or not? My guys won't. But the quarterback and the people sitting up there in the box, we're paying a fucking salary, can surely look down there and see they're in nickel personnel. So when you go to the huddle this time, quarterback, call it nickel 19 week. You call it nickel 19 week, I got this guy right here. I'm, I'm not tied to a mic concept. That's the way I can blend my one and two backs. I, I, I just, not, so does just, that make sense? That's yeah. a big thing for us going. Oh, right I now. know it is. I know it is. And do. see, nobody else understands that problem. They don't understand that your guys, they can't see that. They don't see guys, they see guys running on and off the field all the fucking time, right? Yeah. Sometimes they're subbing rushers. Sometimes they're subbing guys. You know, look, here they come in. But somebody up there has to say, hey, when 54 leaves and 27 comes on, mm -hmm. we nickel call the huddle. And that's how we do it. Now, that tells me how to block the play. If they're in regular, a mic connotation, and they start removing one of the base people, we don't call that nickel because now we're tied to a mic number. And the center has the mic fucking player. Then the quarterback has to be able to one back to count them and say, we can't go over there, we gotta go over here, or we gotta throw it, we gotta, we gotta do something differently. So that 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 verbiage is, is how we, we deal with it. And we have a whole bunch of ways of doing it. And that's what we're gonna put on and let you see how would you call this and what would you call it, you see what I mean? And, and so, uh, and these are the two plays we're going to run. We're going to run them and run them and run them and run them and run them. And now I'd like to see, can we, you know, can we do it like this? Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I got one right here, guys, it's, it's scary. I mean, that motherfucker is scary. So uh, if, if, if I can add to his cause, then this jump's more important for me than it is for you. <laughs> because uh, I got all this. I got, a, I got a room full of these guys. They can figure that shit out because we built a table big enough for one and two backs. So to answer you, yeah, if you're going to be more one back than two, I'd start there. But i quickly have me a way to go the other because I want to solve all these problems too. Right. Yeah. Because we, we, we got X number of times of practice. You, you actually have more practice time than we do because we don't have many people that can practice. So... Uh, we can't stay out there long, but we get a lot more classroom than you do, you know, and they're all seniors for us. You know, we don't have but one young guy in every room, so it, it's a different set of problems, but it's the same, and so I can't let this number go, because the minute I get up to 15, that shit right there is getting ready to happen, and that happens, we got third and long, that happens, we're going to lose, just like you're going to lose, in my opinion, because you've created something that ain't very complex. That, that's kind of it that's so uh, I don't think these words are necessarily as important other than they kind of kind of make sense they kind of make sense like one of our words right here is this okay
That word to me is descriptive because it tells me we block the people in the box. So when I call it strong, it could be nickel, it could be just box, it could be every way, but we know we don't have any fucking body that ain't in there. They belong to, okay? Likewise, when we go out to the weak side, we use a term, and we really are talking to this receiver, if it's singled with trips over here, that you now have to block any eight guy that comes down, is, and so we call that term safety, which tells our, our, our people up front. We also have a weak force game that we just simply call force that tells us the same thing. And the term nickel also tells us that we're in a weak force or a safety system. So we have every one of those tools. <coughs> we have every one of those tools, and that verbiage is what tells my guy who to declare. But he must know whether substitute defense was on. Now, as I said, there are people upstairs in that room that are a lot smarter than I am. They're a lot smarter than I am. I mean, their IQs are unbelievable. And, and, and I'm impressed with how quickly they can grab things. But what they do not understand is their brilliance makes not a fucking matter. It's these guys' brilliance. I need to combine a couple of guys just like you do that can barely fucking read and write. And I gotta help them understand what to do. And my center can't be one of those. Because he's gotta be my he gotta be my head honcho. And and the quarterback needs to know as much as he possibly can, but sometimes you get what you got. Like, you know, I've had guys that are a lot brighter than Michael. I've had a couple of quarterbacks who weren't as bright as Mike did. So, you know, you got what you got. There, you know, it's 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 what we have. So we can't whine about it. What we have to do is adapt, but I can't put their brilliance in this room. I, I can't because my guys will fail. And that's sad that football is like that. Uh, and our league is is the reason that I, I, it's the worst that I've ever seen, and it's getting worse because we got guys at the top that are so smart they think that every player in here can understand what they understand. They cannot because they can't see. <laughs> they got to go up, make a call. We got to go. We got to go. Well, we've got to go to the right ones. Now, and what do we want to practice? Well, this, vanilla, vanilla. Well, fuck, I mean, what the problem is, right? Here they come off eddies. Here they come. How are we doing with it? What are we going to do here? Uh, the same problems, but it's done with substituted packages, and that they need to know when it is and when it isn't, and then you're off and running. That's the way I see it. Uh, now, we tie... Every play has a keeper. Every play has, and a keeper for us is a pass. Does, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and we we, we got to get together on a couple of words. But we have a keeper where he's protected, and we have a naked where he has no protection, and we have a QB keep. And all three of these are distinctly different problems. So every play that we put in has a keeper where he has somebody blocking his edge, and he's faking away from it. We have a naked where there is nobody blocking his edge. And we have a run called, and he's reading the run. Now, all our read experience comes with under center. What we're interested in is reading from the gun. You understand? And you all are way ahead of us because of all the spread offenses. Now, Greg Knapp's up there already having, you know, a five, six-day study on Ohio State, Texas, you, Georgia, West Virginia. He's, in, he's, in, he's doing what you're doing backwards because if he can get it, it's even easier because, <clears throat> see, the difference between our stuff like this is our quarterback turns his back rather than sees the face of it. So when you see him, you're going to say, how the fuck does he know to do that? Well, that, that takes the guy upstairs and Greg being really, really bright and trained. But they also chase the ball more when he isn't threatening them. Right. Okay? Same thing's going to happen with us because our guy is a bigger threat than our runner. Okay? And he... He's a bigger threat. So we want to use him as, as much of a decoy as we possibly can. And so we've got to fit all that into this system. But, but every one of those have these built into it. 
And when we call this, we don't know whether he's got it or not. When we call this, we have him running or he's running a combination pass. Here, he has crossers and big comebacks and takeoffs and things of that sort, but he has protection. And we do that a little bit when everybody else does. So I'll, I'll take you through that because they, they are a part of the running game. Now, when we do our run periods, you know, that's a Wednesday, Thursday for eight plays on offense, eight plays on defense, you know. There is, these plays are in there because they are our running game. They, I, I put them in my script. If I'm given 10 of the 20 plays, there's going to be one or two in there, and the defense won't know they're in there because it doesn't do me any good to go handing the ball off and the whole defense go running in there and jump in the fucking top. That's the waste, biggest waste of fucking time there is in America. So I, I tell them, guys, you go down in there now. There's somebody going to run around that corner up here. And so we do it, and that's how we practice it constantly. To give us a response. Yeah. It, 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 it does work. It does work. We get an inside drill trying to run the play. It's a major pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, because like you said, I mean, there's no threat of anything coming back out. Well, there is here. Yeah. And it'll be day one. And we don't even put it on the script. Right. Because they won't know. We have a way to earmark them and, you know, just put little things on the computer sheet. And they, they get the sheet, but they can't read the code. So they don't know. And here it comes out of there. Well, they're wrong, right? Yeah. That's the way we, we solve that problem. Because they know when they play us out there, day one, there's eight of them, there's one, there's ten of them, there's two. But that's as important a teaching for us as our running game because I don't want them to take the time out of the drop-back passing game to teach that shit. You know, they need to get on with theirs. So they need the reps for me. You know? <coughs> and then how we teach that, we'll get into as we go. Uh, I, I did not hear do any tight zone. But obviously, you guys have been in that world more because it's an easier handoff. And we really are ahead of you in that category because you can go back 10 years ago to the Buffalo Bills with Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas running gun, tight zone, weak and strong, as good as it can be done. Really, really amazing stuff. And, but no why. I'm going to talk wide, and if, you, if, we, if we have to slow down to cover the other, we can do that too. Just in, you know, as we go, it, the way it will come up for us probably is going to be kind of your thoughts on track and, you know, reads right. and that that's where stuff, I'm just right to now. marry with the, you know, the that's, stretch. That's where I'm going to marry. The important thing was we first taught a concept of how we get them declared. Right. Yeah. Can we run it weak, or does it have to go back to an over-over system? Um, and then what, what are these tied to it and how the substitute defense enters into the mix so that we know the numbers of the guys we're dealing with and responsible for. Can you talk a little technique along the way, man, just a little, you know, frontal technique and stuff in terms of aiming points, in terms of... Well, that's where I'm going next. Great. After we got the terminology to know who we're going after, Good. now I'm going to break down Great. those fronts and the concepts of how we would block every one of these combinations. Great. Okay, and then we'll take the film, put it on, and I'll say, well, that one's not wide enough. This one's too wide. That's, that has to be done this way. This, you know, and then we, we can communicate and build off of it. And as we get going during the day, some things are going to be redundant when they are. Say, Coach, we got that. Move on. You know, because it's the little things that make these things efficient because this is, this is my work. You know, this is all I'm trying to create. And if I can do that, we have a chance to win games. That's all there is. That's, that's all I know, that, that, you know, but that's all I do, too. I mean, I, I, this is a whole system. I don't do anything else. I don't do anything else. So uh, We're able to get it taught because we don't run counters. We don't run powers. We don't run pull plays. We don't run because there's too many niggas. And, and we'll, we'll get Bray in here on a Tuesday night and Monday night and Wednesday night and put one in, and, and we'll have one big one, and then two that get hit in the back. That footer has gone here. He ain't running that. Sorry, we just don't run. Okay, mm -hmm. ready to move on? Yep, ready. Yep, yep. All right. Now, the way we teach these to our players 
is through a series of, of combinations. And, and I'm going to start with this, this combination right here, okay? And that's the tackle tight end combination. Um, if I had my druthers, I'd rather he be slightly off than up. But we have to start somewhere, so we start up. We start up. And every time an adjacent player works with a guy, the same technique goes on. So the words we use when a tight end works with a tackle, and the words we use when a guard works with a tackle, and the words we use when a center works with a guard, to the play side of a play is the same teaching landmarks. Okay? And the base landmark for us tells us that the down lineman steps, and his feet will always be somewhat different, but his helmet must aim at the helmet of the adjacent player. So that's true of the guard, the tackle, and the center. They got their helmet aiming at the defender's helmet. And as I said, I don't want to drop step to the front side of any plays. So where does his foot go in order for his helmet to go there? I used to make a big point of that angle, but everybody's feet are so different. The only thing I insist on, and the thing that I'm finding the longer I'm at this, is the more the feet are closer together, not elongated, the easier it is to step going both ways, and the easier it is to get the hat placement in the right spot. So you're going to see my guys not in a kick stance near as much as most people's. In your stance, you're talking more parallel. In other words, if, if I'm the right player and they get in this, we got a problem. we got a real problem. I need that to get closer to a parallel. They won't be parallel because rights are right and lefts are lefts. That's just kind of the way we, we structure it. But you you got to be very careful that if this foot's way back here, that's not too bad, but how about when we go this way? Yeah. You, you understand what we just did? We just, about width. Again, we don't have as much weight forward, and when I put a film on, you're going to say, I can't tell run from fast, and that's what we, we aim for. We do not want it to be seen as to what we are. We do not want that seen. And if there is no tight end, we are up. If there is a tight end, we're down. And if we know he's coming, we're down. There will be a few exceptions because some of our players know they study them and they like to fuck with them so that they waste time trying to figure out, okay, what do they run when he's down, what do they run when he's up. But basically the structure is tight end with you, you're down. Tight end not with you, you're in an up stance. And the reason is pass protection. <laughs> so I make them learn to run block out of a pass protection concept because this is the problem side. That's the slower rush side. So why not put you guys in the best spots? Right. That, that's just the way our mindset. But if we knew this was coming over here, that guy very well may be down. Because he's got to put his helmet on that fucking guy's helmet when we start out the concept. If the tight end is adjacent to you, you get there pretty much together, and you have to work the shit out of that. But it's crucial because this is our read. That is the one the back reads. And I'm going to start with the lineman, but I'm going to quickly go to this guy because you're going to see we, we run a very hard, firm concept here that demands. Not an ask, it demands. Mm -hmm. The further back this is, we have found, and we're having a little problem, that we stay too long because he hadn't got on us yet. So if he's moving across, we got to hit it and leave faster than if he were right beside me. We can do a better job, but what we're trying to say is we don't want them to predict what we're going to do. So we like to move this guy. Okay? And the more we move him, the more they aren't sure which side is strong. Because they got to set theirs too. Then his double become trips. His trips become double. You see what they had to do coverage-wise? You just eliminated a whole bunch of their fucking blitzes now, you guys probably do that by the field. Is that the way you'd say colleges do? Do the blitzes come from the formation side or to the field side? Field, field zone field. pressure field. Okay, well, we don't have that, so I can't say I know the answer to that. But in ours, it's, it's based on tight end in, in Provo. So the more we move him, the more we fuck up the blitzes. 
because now they've got to adjust. And that's why I like him off, because I like to shift him off and do nothing. Shift him off and bring him over, bring him back. Shift him off and bring him over. I mean, I, I take all that I can get. But I got to get a better combination concept. We were very lackluster as the season went on. We waited for him. And he's playing leverage. And so the guy could threaten before my guy could get back into that level. That combination has a term. And that term is described to the tight end, either leaving the huddle or up there but between those two. And it's a tackle uncovered scheme. So it doesn't matter to me how the rest of them lined up. Okay, So that is a tackle uncovered system. It don't matter about the rest of them. That's a tackle uncovered system. He works with that guy. His aiming spot is that spot. Okay, And the read is the first down lineman outside in. So in this defense, that is the first down lineman outside in. The buck is not the outside player. Okay? So that's the combination we started with. The next combination we start with is this one down here. And now it's these two. So the aiming spot of the guard is the helmet of the tackle. Now if it's a 3-4 team, there's a lot of practice difference between those two defenses. That is hard for us. I can imagine how hard that is for you. Because the worst thing is the tackle goes screaming off air with width. His aiming spot has got to be the outside point of that guy. Okay? So the technique that this guy uses is exactly the same technique this guy uses if he's there. If he isn't there, it isn't that way. There's nothing you can do about it. But we're responsible for any combination that we see here off this set. So this has a guard concept call. This has a tackle concept call. And that has to do with uncovered guard. Does that make sense? No. And the read is the five. Now my job as a, as a guard and a tackle is to make the read clean. And that's all we scream at constantly. Is the read clean? If this guy gets knocked out, that ball ain't going out. If that guy gets hooked in, that ball is going out. Likewise here, if he goes out, the ball's coming in. If we're going in, the ball's going out. But it's reading off that player. That's who he's reading. Okay. Now, I still question in the gun whether that aiming spot is that. Because, see, we predicated all this on a drop step get the ball on the third foot. So there's a short step and everybody does them a little different. So he's going to go one, two, and that third is when he gets the ball. Obviously in good, that isn't the case, right? <laughs> it, it's a whole different footwork and that's what I want to see from you guys. I want to study what the angle of entry. We tell him he aims for the tight end and if he's going to the open edge, he goes to an imaginary tight end. So it's a short drop, third step, you get the ball. So the handoff never changes here. The mesh never changes here. That's going to eliminate negatives. See, you should not have a ball on the ground. You should never have a ball on the ground because you run it over and over and over and over and over again. So we got to be able to satisfy ourselves that in gun, if we can go here, is the aiming spot close to it. From what I'm hearing, it's more inside leg of the tight end or outside leg of the tight end. I don't know. But the read is that guy. So if that comes down or sits underneath the tight end, that ball immediately skates there. If that plays out, that ball is going north off that read there. So he goes that one to that one. If that goes out, if that goes in, he's out. So okay, when I read the five technique, on my third step, when I get that ball, I'm aiming right for him. I get that one. I'm reading that. I've got to make these guys make that clean. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're fucking with this guy. On that third step, he's either down that pipe or down there. Okay? Now, everybody thinks we cut back, but we don't cut back because what's going to happen is this player and this player, that's the nose on that side and that's the nose on that side. That guy, when we take the films, is going to be right there. You won't believe it. You, you will not believe it until I show it to you. That nose that we're going to push will be right there. So the cutback is really not a cutback. The cutback is a read outside or a read down the pipe. And you must create that lane for him to see. Now, let me just tell you this. This is hard to do. 
because this guy has never been told what to do. He's the best player on your team. He's the highest recruited guy on your team, or one of them. Maybe not the, but they're the, they're the, the best athletes you got on the team, and they have always run where they feel. And there ain't no such fucking thing here. Okay? None. Okay? Now, here's where disharmony comes, and I don't know how to solve this, but here's the way when we went to Denver, the head coach there said, I believe if one guy coached the running game to the whole team, then over every week, every installation, every whatnot, that everybody would hear it said a certain way. Okay? So you heard what I said, you heard what I said, you heard, what, and then you go coach your guy in your meeting, because we can't meet together, right? We gotta break up and we all got our own problems to solve. And it was still my job to coach this guy on the field. Well, every running back coach I've ever been with, and I have a little fucking war, you know, and as I try to explain, I'm just doing what I think is best for our team. I'm trying to tell him he read it wrong or read it right. Well, here's what happens. When you make it as demonstrative as you read that son of a bitch, you read that one to that one, everyone on the team learns the reads. So guess what? When he comes running off that field and he jumped out and the lead was in, the whole team over there fucking ripping his ass. He ain't never been said a word to in his life now, and now people are asking him what he's running. Now, when I came here, I had a guy that had been in the league nine years. Work it done. First half of his first year, I thought I was going to have to give him up because he'd been a scat back guy. He'd been a guy that double cut. He'd been a guy that got in there, had great body quickness, and then he'd jump out and make plays. That thing right there, he killed me in negatives. But from midpoint of his first year with us through last year, he was amazing. He 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 was amazing, and he now understands. He will come to me and ask me after every game in the locker, "What'd you see? What'd you see? What'd you see?" Because during a game, I'll do it. At practice. I'm on his ass every freaking day. Because when I don't like the read, I tell him he's wrong. And then if I see on film, I go apologize. I walk right around, the gym room's right there, and I say, I was wrong. You, you got it right. Or he walks around here and he says, hey, I fucked it up. Now, the hard part is that with the backfield coach. Because he's got to keep this guy happy. <laughs> that's his fucking problem in that room. So there's, there's, there's some verbiage there that's hard. And I don't care where I go, I have to explain it like that. And, and it doesn't make me right or wrong. It's just the way it is. And... This is one of the problems, for instance, Tom will face because he has to earn that respect from the players. I don't. He does. And how long that takes him, I don't. I can't answer. I can't answer whether he'll ever have that. The guy last year would never do that. The guy at Denver not, does not do it now. And Bobby Turner's been there with them the whole time. But he and I would clash because I didn't like the reads. I didn't like the fucking reads. I want the read to be clearly a one-cut read. It's either bounce out or it's go down here. And then it's my job to block the backs out of the defense and give them a chance by stretching the whole defense over. And uh, our quarterback, right there, we asked for a hard two to three. As the season progresses, we get that gets sloppier and worse. He gets tired of it. We don't ask him to run. We just ask him to burst and to look. Do they have it? Obviously, if we can read it and we're in gun. Then we 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 we're way ahead, so I'm I'm really excited about that process. But you're gonna see some on film, and I'll say real quickly, uh, he 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 cheated me, because he's got to hold the back sack. Because I run no counters, I run no none of those. There ain't no counters. He is the counter. He is he is this system. So we want our best athlete with the ball going that way, and our next best athlete with the ball going the other way. That's that's the way it was all set up. And it has changed as we've gone through it, but these base premises have not changed. Now, the very minute, and I, I want to talk about this technique in, of the combination guys so that, Steve, you, you feel comfortable. But we see a lot of this defense where the nose is in a position that he's no longer on the center. Okay? If he's closer to the guard than the center, then the center and the guard combination it together. So his aim and spot, just like you would imagine, is helmet to spot. Okay, and that technique of how we teach that, 
and we're now going to a mic player of some sort. And now this guy has no help. The read is still this one to this one. Okay? But this technique is hard because now I have nobody to push him like I had right here. That's a much easier read for the back. That's a much tougher read for the back. But we tell him this, we will do our damnedest to lock him this way. So go quickly there to there. And it's these two guys' job to get this one. Guess where, guys? Where the cut is. Because remember now, he ain't cutting until he gets three, three big ones, making a decision, and it's in or out. Okay? But he's not reading the buck. Now, we have had, with the three four teams, we've started having to read it this way some, too. And I'll give you this combination. Because this defense doesn't make any sense. If a strong safety is ever outside, of a backer on the ball, okay? It is the tackle's job, I mean the tight end's job, to call this combination this way. Because you see, we're tied so much to a fullback that is a lead blocker into that guy. In one back, you don't have that, because in one back, you would cleanly just take the ball and run it over this way. You, you may or may not see that, but if you're in two-back, you're going to see it. Now, why would it occur? Because if a strong safety were outside of the backer, that is coming. And you've got to have an answer for that. Three, four teams. So, that's the tight end's call. And we tell him this. You make it. You better be right. You so better be right. In our world, we call that a gang call. But okay. he's, he's bringing them all in a yep. chain up to, the, yep. up, up to that yep. mic right now. Right. Exactly. Same with us. Saying, hey, we got to highlight the reason. The, the, the only reason he can do that is a strong safety is outside of the buck player. If he's inside the buck player, we don't do that. Because okay. the buck is a contain, and he, his back is not reading that guy. He's reading the end. Right. See? So down here, the combination is this pair. Here, it's this pair. There, it's that pair. Okay. You guys can actually just go through this for me. Um, and maybe you're going to go through Tell me if you're going to go through it later. But just go into that covered guy, okay. that technique, okay. and then differently to me with that under, like an under G defense. Okay. All right, we teach what it this way. Is, we teach it this way. If I have a guy adjacent to me coming to take over my guy, I take my inside hand and I hit him in the stomach with the fist. As soon as my fist hits him, I grab. Okay, I grab. I take my outside hand and I go for leverage. I want it to get not wide outside because it doesn't have any leverage, but to get up in on the shoulder pad inside the frame, and I wait for the push of the adjacent guy. So that's the guard if the center's helping. That's the tackle if the guard's pushing. That's the tight end if the other's pushing. And the reason I think those techniques are so similar, I want to be able to always have the ability if my best tackle went down and my best player is a guard and he got to go to tackle, if my tackle went down and we didn't have a tight end to run block, we move him to tight end, you know, fuck, they've at least been exposed to the concept. So it's here. Now, if you don't have help like this defense, then you can't use that technique. So now we use the same thing. That covered guy, now I got help. The Jason guy come with me. Is that, a, is that a punch? Exactly right. Punch or is it, so you're going they go together, the and the helmet's in that. That's a three-pronged shot, baby. Right now. That's right. And you're going to see that, that these guys aren't very good, but you're going to see guys that come off the friggin' ball because they have adjacent help. And we tell our guys, you may not win the one-on-one, -on -one, but you're going to win the fucking two-on-one. Right. And and that that is that's how we've been able to get them to widen. Okay. If we can get them to widen, then yeah. the runner can make a read. If we don't get them to widen, it's our fault. That's the way I, I try to... And, and so I'm very careful never to blame that on the runner if the picture's not clear. And I'll hear comments being made on the sideline, oh, he should have gone out or he should have gone in. I'm like, well, fuck, we don't knock him any further than that. We don't get him going sideways. How can he read that? That ain't his fault. Why? You know, I mean, I try to be fair in that connotation, but the read is there, and it goes outside in. And when we did tight zone, we go inside out, you know, or inside backside. Read it. So that's how we've trained them through the years. And on our drawings, in the book we published, we put the X right behind that, that drawing so that they know that's the one I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. 
That is my guy. That's one I'm looking at. And then, you know, it, 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 as you evolve and then learn to trust it, then away we go. Okay? Now, that's, that's the front side combinations. There's the one thing, Coach, that I just thought over the years I've struggled with. I'm, all, I'm good to go with the tight end club technique. Never been a problem. Back around ball. Okay. You know, go out there, club them out, single right. block. Right. Good on the knock. We call it in the previous, like, you know, from you, I don't know, knockout technique. But, okay. you know, okay, uncover guy. My only, my only issue has always been, is, and I know it's the hardest block of all, is the single block by the tackle on a five technique. That fine line between coming off the ball so you don't get compressed and clubbing. Club's more and, important. And, okay. Club gets me whipped. And it also ensures no penetration on a pinch. That's when you have no guard call. Right. So that call is made by that center guard right here. And he said, he says C. Here he says G. For us, I'm just saying that that's the verbiage here. It wasn't the verbiage in Denver. And I've changed as I go from team to team. When they hear the word G, they know that that guy right there, we're going to knock that son of a bitch off the ball. Oh, yeah. That also told this guy, you got this guy, and you got to get that guy to that nose. You got to get him right. right. We got to know what we got to help. Yeah. No not enough. Yeah, yeah. And that call's got to be repeated to the tackle because on the road you're not going to hear that right, shit. Right. And when they go up here and tee, there's a good chance there's a T and a C going on at the same time. Right. Right. That's, that's the world we're in. That's what we're going to look at here and talk about so that you don't leave wondering what it is. Now that's the front side of the play. Right. And I really don't think that side is the hard side. The hard side is the back side. Well, okay. nice thing with that club is that the same. Has your, you got an adjacent guy, your two hands, stomach, shoulder. Well, well, well I have an adjacent hand, right. So you have adjacent, so you're Punch, point prong. grab, helmet on outside half. Outside half, and then. I'm so I'm adjacent. hitting these three together, and as soon as I hit him, I start grabbing, because when he pushes him, <laughs> that's what gets the torque of the whole thing going sideways. And that will amaze you how guys that aren't as talented can get away with that because they, they work halves. They don't work holes. And then the runner can read that stuff. I think. Club, yes, sir. The club, is it the same three prong? No, no, no. That's, no, that's no, no. That's, that's the, out, the helmet and the hand on the outside are identical. This one this has this. So and this one, will two. take away the power of him being able to get movement Good. knocked off. Now, you've got to be fair to him. Yeah. That, that is a harder technique. But let me tell you what I found historically. When that moves over to there, that reads coming back here. That's why I always tell him one and two. Historically, when we do this, this is stretching Mike's running, or we're not taking the right drop steps. Because they don't know this, and you know, they don't know on defense, is this guy gonna do this? Because you're gonna see that in all our films, because we're jumping out there. They don't, they can't tell whether there's a buck over there or not. Not the defense, they, they, they just play football. That ball goes right there, and he's gonna come behind that, and that next one is the key guy. That is the key guy. See, I think the thing that I, that I probably, I probably, I don't get many of those single blocks now, you know, for us really, because we don't get a bunch of G defense to that play. But the mistake made, I think, is I just try to get to a point where it was club them on your third step, as okay. opposed to See, clubbing them. Out. If they make a hard inside move, yeah. and I don't have a club coming, I can't catch it. Right. Then he'll hit my back in the back. Right. That's another. Right. The back can't read that. Right. What the fuck's he supposed to do? You know? Right. He, he can't let that guy penetrate. So I give up punch for club, and that's right. the catch in. Now, defensively, they don't run a lot of that stunt. You don't usually see a two and a five coming hard in there. Right. But, but they could, because Mike could scrape out, right? Sure. They could. Sure. You, know, so yep. you got to live with it. we got to live with what you got. Good. Um, just to say front side before we go, because uh, I want to get this clear. Front side. You're the uncovered. You're okay. going. You're going helmet to helmet, aiming point. Right. Like Steve just asked about the three. What is your timing? What is okay. your? We try to push before we climb. But what people do to us, because we do it over and over and over, is they try to to plug the linebacker and force the runner not to have his cleaner read. They try to hit us before we can push the guy. Well, when that happens, I got to come off. I got no choice. But there's also a gap problem on defense because if he hits the guard real fast and I, I, I firm him up square, or I don't swing on him, I firm him up square, the runner in theory can run on either side. And all I tell our guards to do is you 
is you try to push, you can't push, you, it's right in my face. And I practice it all the time. It right in my face. You just hang on to it. Just hang on to it. And when he reaches to make that tackle, that's when you get Because mm -hmm. you don't try to knock him. If you try to knock him, you're going to get exposed because he's a better athlete than you are. But that takes leverage and steps and repetition. That's just over and over and over and over and over again. So every one of these will work every day. This, this is essential. We work C's, G's, and T's. We, we, we got to do it. We got to fucking show it. It's, we got to give the read over there, and, and so we've just learned. But the mic can do that on a, on a two or a three technique, too, when you're seeing. The mic can, too, he can hit that scene. The center's got to come on square. And you'll see some of the times we do it real well, sometimes we don't. You know? But we see more and more of that, and certain teams make us practice that a whole bunch more than we're used to. Does that answer that question? Because yeah. that is going to happen. Somebody's going to think the best way to get you is not let your guard go. Knock them out. Yeah. That's what yeah. happened to us in the Big Ten. That's what yeah. we started doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just part of the formula. So when I do the drills, when I do the drills, I, I, I control the defense. And, and uh, we don't do any, we have no, we get no sleds, we get no, nothing but drills. It's all C's, G's, T's, plug. Now, do, 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 pump, 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 out of pass. That's what, that's what no, it's it. back and flows. You just take. Take your, your T you got going. You're talking, you were talking push to backer. Same as thing. backer flows, you just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Just keep pushing, keep pushing. He sets his flows, you keep pushing, keep pushing. Right. Snap it off. And that's why, as I told you, when the tight end's not side by side with me, it's a little harder because I can't wait for him. Yeah. Because he's trying to gain leverage. And the runner's reading that leverage. So, because he, you know, that's that's the one that goes to the edge. That's the big one. That's, that's the one that has 20 pluses. Yeah. Uh, so. And, and we, we try very hard in certain formations to find that spot. Now, we also have to practice a lot of this concept. And this, this is hard, but because of down in distance, they don't know whether we're going to run or throw. Because we're 50-50. I mean, we're going to throw it exactly half the snaps in the course of a season that we run it. Now, some games we throw more, some games we run more. Depends on what the score is, how it's going. But, I mean, there's all kinds of shit back but we, we aim for a half point. So first and second down, a lot of times this end that played inside over there is now going to line up right here. Okay? And so we now go to this combination. We never tee a wide end. Never. Because they've already created the hole. they already created the problem. And the read is so fucking easy for the runner because he knows right now he's going to explode into that hole and now we want this stop. Because if I go out, where's the three going to probably play? He's going to play out. Now where's the ball from? Okay. This also creates, and you're going to see on film, we fuck this up. We come up with this, and sometimes this guy starts here to try to fuck us up and shuts to there. we got to get it combination so that these two are calling. Now the center is this one. Because the one thing you don't want the center doing now is knocking the three out because we're trying to pin him in. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we've gotten better at that, but that's hard. Because there's a communication happening real fucking quick right there in that combination. But if you throw the ball on, you know, if we throw it on first and ten, and it's incomplete, and it's second and ten, there's a good chance that guy's going there for pass rush. Wouldn't you say? I'll take this fucking play, and I'll run it right up your ass for six, seven, eight every time. Now, we created third and two, third and three. Well, that makes sense to me because now we can make third and three, right? Now, he, he gets nervous because coach starts playing him in there. Well, I just help myself running on first and throwing on second. You see, that, that, that's the world we're trying to create for the, for the system by, by giving us some flexibility. How much of that, how much of that combination, this, just take this season, how much of that were you in? It's getting more and more. I just, I, the first one I think was Florida State for us. That's, 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 that's Florida State for us. Then I'm, then I'm, I'm going to practice more of that technique. We don't get in real deep with the tackle. We do it with a hand. The guard still uses club technique there, guard. which is unusual. But he calls out the tackle combination so the center can go man. And the reason we club that is we would like to knock him out into this guy's hand, and then we get a stymie and a softness. And we've had some great cuts even back into that side of the hole. And so we have not used the technique combination because it's backwards, right? Yeah. See? So we use the club guard technique 
with the tackle hand technique up to that player. And then this guy hurries based on what he gets. Now the minute he gets to there, you know, he's there. I mean, he's out of there. So he can't, can't you know, do that. What are those steps? I mean, what's the, the steps you're teaching that tackle? We tell them to take the inside foot straight up the field with a good stiff on it. Our combination call here is pinch. And when we do it, we call it hand to emphasize to them, don't do it with the shoulder. Because you get in there and get stuck, and then in the back, sees this guy unblocked, well, fuck, he don't, he don't run down in that barrel. you got to get off and up. you got to get up and cover him up so he can pick the crease that he wants. And that's why we do it that way. Tall stay like this. Yep. And, and, of course, this, this is irrelevant, what you call it. This yeah. Yeah. But, but this tells you a little bit of how I am about terms. That makes sense to me. This, this also makes sense to me. It's a backward C or G or T. It's going to the play. So we had to have a word that's different, and then this told me how to do it. So our guys call it hand here, but it's hand pinch. That's what we teach you. If it's tight zone, it'd be heavy pinch. So they learn it that way. Water? I'm trying to do it. P, keep ripping. Let's go backside, and then I'm going to go to pinch. If you got questions, scream away. Now, now, now we're going to the back side, and that club technique, strong side, and weak side are no different. Is that off your step and down? Is that probably off his, I mean, a second step, third step, that club, a second step, that club? This guy? No, the front, you can go back to front side, just, uh, as you said, that club, when you talk that club. I'm that, I'm that tackle. With well, you. as I told him, I'm right there. I'm, I'm grabbing it and hitting that's right there. And it's really coming second, right now. That's a second step. That's all, that hopefully, a three-pronged deal. We do not wait to club. Oh, so he's still doing Yeah, he got to do it because if you go inside, I'm going, I'm not, if I don't have that there, I won't touch you. I will not. If I have this right here, he'll go inside me and I'll yeah. fuck it. He'll hit me right in that back. So you're talking, I'm not, I'm not tackle with that club. I'm still. Exactly right. Shot. And that hand. Right there for a grab. Because there's still a good chance he's going to play out with my helmet going out. Now, what they'll try to do is their helmet won't stretch. See, what they'll try to do is do it like that. Well, you don't want that because you don't you want the helmet out there to get him to move. And then the club is a catcher. It's a safety valve. That's why. That's what. That, that's exactly right. That's what got. It, it, that, I know. And that's why we took it. I try to go one, you know, just to stop from that. What you're talking about, that exactly. turning in the hole, you know what I mean? Because then they get like this. Yes. Well, now what does he read now? Yes. He can't read that. Right. He has exactly. no choice. So now he makes a hard cut back right. over and makes two yards, and we went back to the huddle. And everybody yelled at the back for going back there, and then we looked at the film, and the fucking guy's ass is right. He had right. no read. But, but he's also got to stop the negative. So, and when we teach this, you see, this is, if we were one back, that's the same system. We teach him to read one, two, a little quicker. We're doubling that Sunday because in one back, we're responsible for the first backer over on that side, provided it's not a mic system. If it's a mic system, that's the mic he belongs to. If it isn't a mic system, it's the first guy out there to that side because this guy's responsible for the other elements. So those techniques are the same, it's just an upstance club. And ours do it pretty damn good. They still would like to pivot a little more than you'd like them to, and they ask it. And I'll show you a couple little tricks there to kind of help that a little bit, but as we go. So what I want to do now is go to the back side, because this is really where the whole shit has to be, in my opinion. Because these are the guys that make the plays. When we started 
12 years ago. Our guards blocked the three techniques, and we did this. Okay, that's how we talk. And it didn't take us long uh, to realize that two things created a problem for us. That stunt, where he bumped the center, and this one went over the top. those guys that I'm shooting for. And second of all, this guy's better than my guy. And the reason he's better than my guy, he, he makes four times more money than my guy does. And he's the number one draft choice from Georgia and your place, and LSU. You know, he's, he, he's their best player. And most of them put the best one at three and the slug at nose, right? So, I'm doubling the fucking slug so I can single the three. It didn't make no sense. <laughs> okay. So that were on check. And we were cutting this motherfucker like you cannot believe. I mean, I was sawing his ass up. I was so thrilled. And then all this shit started and then the mismatch. So time evolved. And it's now done this one. Okay, now the pressure's on the backside guard. But at least the mismatch is not the same. We are not able to cut this guy very often. So we've about quit cutting him. If his weight's forward and we think we can read his stance, then we'll shoot the cut and we'll roll it in there as best we can. But we're seeing them play off with their hands. Okay. Now that softens them down, so there's some good side of that shit too. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he, he, he's able to push me down. And remember, it's going for right here. right? That's where that cut's going to happen. Right. So we now stay up. And we put our hat across, and we club the back hand. Club the back hand, okay? And the problem is doing this technique and having leverage is difficult for my athletes. If I had a more athletic guy, it wouldn't be as difficult. But to be able to get down in there and grab this back hand, the reason I have to grab the back hand, again, he could loop behind me, and the good ones can make the play out the back side. So I've got to be able to catch a little piece of it with that hand. And I've got to get him to right there. Got to get that fucker move to there. I don't have to knock him back. I just got to knock him over there. <laughs> okay? But it used to be cut, and now it's rarely cut. Uh, you'll see sometimes we do it pretty good, sometimes we don't. Are you talking, let me ask this. Just, you're talking about a true, are you talking about a true shade nose or more of a G? A shade nose, you're... If it's closer to the center than the guard, then we always push it. If he's closer to the guard than the center, then the center's working combination every time, yeah. and I'm now making a man call back here. That's yours. Okay. That's how it is. If it's a shade nose, that guy knows he's going. This guy knows he's going. But if it's straight up in there, we don't know. And the reason is, this is going to see you see this whole thing. No way you got to do it. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But how can that occur? It can occur because. Here comes a weak side to me on that side, so now what I'm going to do with Will, he moves over to the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get it. But as long as it's here, that's man. And we oversplit, and we cut away. And I'll talk about it here in a second. So you're talking about really that G, that is, that is your club. This is not a club technique. No. This is an inside man. Hook him and hold him and lock the backside and okay. take him where he wants to go because that's going to be the number two read. Odds are, if he's playing read, this one's playing read, and he goes out, that ball on the third step is going to go from that one to that one. And that's the one that will be over here that he's making his cut off. That's just the way, the way it happens on defense. Okay. Now, it's in here that this becomes very confusing for the up-front players because a lot of times this is double and this is up there, right? Is that true? Yes. No? Okay. Yep. okay, so the technique of this guy changes and that's why it's so imperative that they understand what each other's doing. Here, we just treat him as if he were that guy. If he's sitting there right there, we then build a wall off that thing and sit to him or him, whichever one he comes, but if that's the wheel and there has been no nickel turn, then he, he's got that guy. He's got to run him you know, to the whole core of the play, no matter how it was declined. But if, if the center is declared him with the concept, then he sifts 
from that one to that one so that that's coordinated. Okay? So that, that took it if he's a shade nose or a two technique on the back side. That answer both those. And it's imperative that they get run all the way to that spot. And I'll show you that over and over again because it's, it's, it's just amazing how far they go. All right, now you're into this system. Okay. Now we're into drop steps. The people on the back side of our thing are constantly doing this. The people on the front side are stepping at the target with the helmet aiming for the helmet of the back. Does that make sense? Because I want, I want you to see it, I want you to hear it, and I want you to see it, and I want you to tell me if, if what you're seeing is what we're saying. If it isn't, we're, we're fucked up, and I think it is, but I always, I always stress that issue. Now, when there is a nose, <laughs> when there is a nose, the combination of these three is the world you're now in. So we drop step and we read that guy with the back guard. We used to always do this. Right. Until the zone dog started. So we now make the combination call by the center saying, you're drop stepping and going with me. When we take that drop step, we leave a step arm behind us. It's, it's very quick. Because if the three were to pinch, you want to pull him on with your hand. Because they could be running this stuff too, right? They could be. Yeah. So you gotta have that built into the system. So that call told us how to do it. This drop step clears up his picture because he's either got that one or that one, depending on what happened. He drop steps, he's either got that one or that one, depending on what he's got. And those three work a backdoor combination. The very minute they hear this, they now drop step on their own. Because that guy won't come back here. That guy will come back here. Now that, that has evolved since you and I talked. I mean, that is, that is constant. We're kind of the backwards of that. If we feel it's coming, we make it difficult to bring them all to change. If we don't, we do the conventional. It's, it's they start for us. Yep. It's shade nose with combination. It isn't. We it's good. It's done. It's, it's over. And the center never waits on him. He goes, I don't do that. Like that. Yeah. It's good. Punching right on. He has some keys that kind of help him, and we talk about those. But this is a massive drop step. Because let me tell you what happens here. Okay? This guy will be somewhere right over there. When we practice the drill that we're cutting, we put a bag over the guard and we put a bag over here and the center goes on that side <laughs> and this fucking tackle has to go all the way over there because that's where he is. And they still never do it good enough and that's all I do. I can't get it good enough. Now in practice, we tackle our defense. We don't take them to the ground, but we grab them. And the reason we do that in order for us to teach drop steps and our back to respect what's happening back there, we go tackle that three or tackle that displaced nose. We tackle them with our arms around their bodies. The defense hates it. We have fist fights. We have fights. We have problems. I said, because I, I, I got no other way to. How am I going to take this fucking running back and teach him to take three steps, trust him, and you bore your ass down in there when, and, and in practice, that three is going to blow his ass up. So I tell him, yeah. You got your choice here. Now, I ain't real popular up there either, okay? And so I got to fight that battle for time. And I've been fighting this one for everywhere I've ever been. Well, I said, guys, what are you going to do that? I mean, you want me to hurt you? You want me to fight? I'm trying to help you. I'm trying. Because if I can get my arms around you, I can cut you. And I, I got to run my ass a long way to get to that. But the drop step is the same. So we actually train our players to tackle before we ever teach them to cut. You never think that. You never think that. I get so many arguments over there. Oh, I know. I and mean, they say, well, you jerked him. I said, fuck, the guy's throwing me around. I've tried. You know, I just can't let him hit him. And, and here's my rule, so, so everybody understands. If you tackle, I cut. That's, that's the way. That's the way we play. What do you mean? If your guys tackle my back, I'm cutting. If you stay up and buddy, then, you know, that's fine. That's fair. 
Well, when you start tackling him, I'm going to fucking cut your ass, okay? Now, do you want to be cut or do you want to be tackled? You just got your choice. That's the way it's going to be. And I, luckily, I've been in a position where I could do that, but I think it's a big, big teaching point because how many times have you heard me say, that guy is going to be over to that guy, and I'm going to put a bell, and I'm going to show you how it's over and over and over. That's where they are. And now it's a matter of can the quarterback hold the back player? Because we have nobody on that side of it. Now, sometimes we hold off in these situations because we know they're going to chase and be unsound. I mean, we know that. So that's the way it's set going to the strong. Now, let's go back the other way because this is different than everybody does it. And we have evolved through years now. I'm not saying it's right. But the same problem we had on that three technique over there, we got over here. Now, that combination is going on. Now, the tight end coach is not going to like that no matter who he is. Because you know what you just told him his tight end's got to do? He's got to occupy the same problems of cutting and tackling, but he athletically is great. And I told you that that's one of the reasons I like him there. Because where's his feet when he starts right there? He's already drop step, hasn't he? It's ten times easier. And if he's in motion, it's even easier than that. But the techniques of all those people are the same concepts. They would have set that defense coming from this way, they would have set this with the same training they did over there. That three-man concept is the same. And we tell this tackle, you must make the mic go over the top to the center, because that's the one the center, he's declaring the mic player. You bring the tight end with the drop step concept, and you two go from that one to that one, and that one belongs to the quarterback. But you're covering for the center through the C. Because the center can't block a three man concept and handle a backdoor mic, right? Now the runner's got to be patient too, because his read to a, to a reduction side is outside the inside. So here he goes, one to two. So I'm going to widen that. that. That read's going to be over as quick as I can. I use club technique there from it up. And I'm doing this technique, and we're going to read this one. This one goes in, I'm going out. This one goes out, I'm going in. And the center's waiting on the mic to be run to him. Okay. That's true in 3-4 or an under front. It's the same train. In three, four. One of the things, Coach, that we've evolved to you won't like, but got it off the tape at, from Illinois. Mm -hmm. um, we started on the back side um, using a call where we could wall the three technique with the guard okay. and pull the tackle around and cut the backer. Right. And I know you're not big on yeah. pull blocks. Yeah. But, but we went into that to try to build, really build a wall on the back side because at, at times we were struggling. They were, they were, they were in the hit hard on mm -hmm. those I can drop see step tackles. I, I, my athletes would never get there, and, and my guys can run, but uh, they could Kind of use both, you know, just try to yeah. change it up. Well, I, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in this change, and I'll throw this one at you because, you know, I'm a big believer in this one. Is because I hold a whole bunch of people when that tight end does that. So, I, I got little things that are in there, just like you're talking about, that we try to mix and match with, and get it as we said. But the drop step of the system on one side is directly opposite of the drop step on the others. And the drop steps clearly have to come all the way back. That right. takes lots of time. And if their feet are fucking elongated because of left being left and right being right, they can't get there. Right. Cannot get there. Right. Cannot, cannot do that. Because, see, a lot of this is over over, right? We don't know whether we're going that way or that way. Yeah. So we got to call that. At the line, so our linemen can't go up getting their feet set to go one way. You know. uh, just man, I don't want to just shoot things up to me to get clear. Is <coughs> it different what you tell technique at the hands, and I want to go through and maybe I miss it or not. Two biggest things we saw running this was the shade backside mm -hmm. for that guard, mm -hmm. and then and then I want your I guess your technique, and then the backside G. I want to go through that and just get it again, exactly okay. what it is. Okay. How you start with the shake is that center's going front side. When our center's going front side, it used to be always cut. 
The only time we ever cut down is when he reads the stance so that he knows he's coming, attacking downhill, and I can get him down. That's simple, if you, yep. can, if you can read it. If you can't read it, you can't do it anymore. Yep. They play off of your hands. So we, we take cutoff angle, but we take our back hand, and that is our catch hand. And we must dip when we go because his leverage is so much lower than ours yeah. because of the nature of the beast that we have to get up on him and then start running. And the lock hand is essential because athletically what the noses will do, they'll get you and run you and fall back like that just when the runner made a cut. Well, he fucking run, I can't read that. Can't read that. So, so what I'm saying, Okay. On that shade, no. Right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step in here like that, and I'm going to bring this club, and i got to have leverage so that you don't jack me this way in case I misread the thing. Yeah. And now all I'm trying to do is get you to that tight end spot by Once running, I had, and I'm holding this some bitch right here because I ain't worried about you there. He'll make the cut off that, but he won't make the cut if you throw me back and fall back in there. So I'm always talking about that, and you're going to see so a lot of places where we're not very good. That club is still very much the same as the it's front side. It's the same. We talk about locking the back hand, lock the back hand, lock the back hand. Front side yeah. hand, you're trying to come. I'm bringing everything I can over there. As much as to keep that exactly right. penetration. Exactly right. But remember, if I thought penetration was an issue, I could no. cut. I could cut. Good. If I weren't sure, I had to run. You had to run. Your and hands and that's, to get that, that is not side. something that happens very fast. That takes... A lot of training, a lot of time, and it used to be simple because we were always working the center with him. Yeah. And he was, he was stiff arming him when we came no, that's, down. That's what we do. And that's, let me ask you, what you tell him with his head? The same thing to fight it, or do you end up more backside being? No, my head? helmet's front side. Just trying to run. Yes, sir. I got to get him watched. Now, when he gets closer to me than the center, okay. okay the first thing I do is I make a man call. Okay. That man is to my back tackle. I'm telling you, I got this guy. You got the backer that's in location. If the backer in location is where you can't get there, you must call me in combination. And the reason I had to do that is if we both got down, do you yeah. think I can see that linebacker right there? There ain't no fucking way you can see it. Yeah. That big son of a bitch is sitting right there in front of you, and you're in a down stance. You can't, but the tackle's sitting right here, and he's got a width guy, and his backer's right there. Then he calls the combination. So it goes man to whatever. Back side. The center knows he's working three-man combinations if he has a shade. If the shade moves over, he's only working front side. He's a C-ski. So his technique is the same. It's just he has different personnel he's working with. That's what tells the back guard, I'm a man. No call. Sure. So you get that G. You man. get that G. You're still here. Man call. No. Exactly right. I'm still locking back here. Call it and run. And I try to teach a leverage. And, and, and if I don't get a leverage... Sometimes somewhere in there he'll jack me back, and that's when the runner's trying to make a cut, and you'll see one of those, he's jump cutting because he's trying to avoid that guy, and I can't let that happen. I can't let that happen. And that takes more, that one technique to a shade nose takes more reps than perhaps any other technique other than the tackle tight end. It, it takes more drill work than any other item. And then the center nose takes tremendous numbers when it's a shade and we're running to the shade. You've you, you got no way to do that but one way, and that's just do it. So what the center does to a shade front is the same as the guard does to the shade behind the nose. It is exactly the same technique. You do not try to hook it. You don't do anything. You get your head down in there, and you go scramble, and you lock your back hand because he's going to throw you and fall back to the good runner. Get that armpit hook, try to hook that up. Just hang in, just hang up under there. Just hang up under there and get cloth and hang in there and try to run him and not let him throw you. The more you get him running now, that's when the cut comes. That's where it happens. The farther you go, you're that backside left guard. I get to that head up anywhere in that field. Now Man. you're in combination. Okay, because the backer stack. Okay, now yeah, you got the head up, backer stack. Right. So now you're back in the combination. I'm back in the combination. You're back to your grab stomach. You say that's okay, the same I, we, we have two techniques, and I didn't give you that to a three, but it's the same as the three technique concept, that we're either stiff arm or club, okay? We have that backer there. Yep. So we either stiff arm crossover or we club crossover. If they're grab team, we club them. Because if we don't chop that, that arm, he'll grab me and then the backer's free, you know? 
But I don't like them to club as a starting spot because I think they have a tendency to miss. And now suddenly their body's forward and that hole behind them gets too hard for the drop step tackle. So I start with this concept of stiff arm and crossover aiming for that angle. And now the cut's back over here. So you're saying this. Level. So when he goes to a two and that backer's in that location, this is the same technique. It is exactly the same technique. So it is true. Crossover, crossover stiff arm. It's either stiff arm or club. And we choose pretty much when they walk in the first day from the film, the, re, the run film, we will pretty much have decided how we're going to start with each guy. We, we will know. You know. It, it, we'll just know. We'll know. Is, is this a grab team or not a grab team? And I tell them in the game, if they grab you, change. If they don't grab you, change the other way. How they do the last time, do the next time. You you choose. Don't don't wait for me to fucking have to coach you now. You got two techniques. You use the right one, and that takes work. I mean that. Now you see where all my time went, because I had to teach every one of these little things. That's a, that's a pile of shit right there. Now. And we just did one play. But guess what? This is this is the, the same concept. When I got two backs, one backs, I'm teaching the same things. So I get I get my twelve play. But I just keep I just keep running the same drills. The region is the same to the back, handoff the same to the quarterback, the keeper fakes the same. It's a matter of us now spotting them up right. Coach, we have the chop on the uh, cut technique of the backside tackle. Okay. You're using lateral chop or you're losing the stiff arm. You're a backside tackle he drop does, step. It does not matter to him which technique this guy's using. Right. But he has to understand that he, he has to do them differently. Right. We tell him he must drop totally at, you know, 45. So he's got to get there like that. And then somewhere about his third step, because that guy's going to be all the way over there on the other side of that center. Right. When he gets to that third step, it's essentially a heap pump, and he still now start working up the field. He's got to go up the field. And a lot of them want to cut going sideways. Well, that ain't, that ain't good enough because you'll just take him into the play. The other thing they do poorly is when they go to throw, their ass goes down. Right. They step over that. So we tell them when you throw going upfield, Get your ass up in the air because when they try to step over that one, you'll trip him and it'll look like you know what you're doing. Now, we practice that a bunch live uh, on backs. I mean, you can find a nice piece of grass and here we go. You know, sometimes I'll even wet it down on a hot day and so it's nasty, sloppy. But they, get, they, get, they know that's going to be real fast live. And I make that bag be way over there. Right. And the key is up field. And you'll see we have some bad ones too. Talking okay, frontside, backside concepts, and it doesn't really matter to me whether, as long as I spot them right, and we know which one we have, and the rest of it. Uh, it's, uh... Okay, let's take a P. I got two, and then uh, come back. And we'll start on P, and then we'll take every one of these same things and talk about what we saw in the films. Some of the films have uh, just good plays. Some of the films have teaching point plays. Some of them have every play. I mean. So we got them all. We got them all. Weak, strong. You know. Coach, one quick question. Go into a uh, go into a three technique. Okay. Okay. Go Center over. guard. Uh, guard. I'm the guard. We're going to the three here. Three. Okay. Okay. I'm saying. Uh, center come with me. Uh, no center. Just no center. Okay. Right now. Okay. I'm coming off. I know I'm all set with the club, but a five technique singled up tackle. I'm a singled up guard right now. Right. Okay. Kind of got you know that. That for the back to me is a little different animal because you know that five technique. Oh shit! You know, so now, what do I do? I, I cannot use club hand now. Okay, good. I cannot use club. That's what I thought. Because I got his read is going to happen right. immediately, right. and I got to knock him back. Right. Now I have some guys that I trust to do that, and I have some guys I don't. I'll go into a game, you get to do it, and you don't. Yep. When yeah. your fucking game improves, we'll come do you. But I got one guy, and he's my guy, and I'm gonna ride that guy. I like him opposite the hand of the quarterback. So if I got a righty, I like him on the left. If I got a lefty, I got him on the right because this quarterback's presence always helps that. So my lefty runs better keepers naked left, and your righty runs better keepers and naked right. So the defense holds more, so they pinch less. You get the picture of yep. what I'm trying to say? Yes. So I orchestrate that in my talent level as fast as I can. Because Michael's left-handed, my right guard has to be my punch guy. He got to be my best player. I mean, other than the pass protectors, 
he, he, he's got to be able to win a few one-on-ones against the trees. And that's how I teach him. Come on off that ball. He's yours. I don't want to hear all that shit about where he's stunting and all that. You got it, baby. You got it. If you know he's going in, bring your center. Sure, but right. don't, don't, don't fuck me up now. We don't see you anymore, you know, Coach, um, as much now because we're more spread orientated out of this play. But, we, we're, you know, we just kind of along the lines of what you're talking about, we started getting a bunch of eight-man front, you know. And, you know, a lot of that shit. Okay. And, and, and this, this whole deal here, they were jetting him and pressing him right now, mm -hmm. you know, and fast flowing him. On flow that way. On flow that way. Yeah. You know, and so, and, and this, this, this fucker here, you know, I mean, he's, we're trying to, we, we're the same deal, start out cutting and we try to run him, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. got tight shapes, he's, he's chasing that freaking center, he and he's pressing this shit here and he's over the top, but my question is this, at what, you know, he's, He's kind of caught between, and sometimes even he doesn't press. Sometimes he shuffles and then presses late. Yeah, even if I've declared this guy, I'd take that guy. Take that guy. Take He's that protecting guy. you in case he comes exactly. here right now. I, right? Cannot ask, I cannot ask him to, to help this scene and handle that back end. So right or wrong, we got to the point where we started going out here, here, inserting this thing yeah, with the fullback. We full would never back. do that. That belongs to the wide receiver. Okay. So you, you That's won't, a box you concept. Won't, right. That would have to be a linebacker human being for me to do that. Which could be. And if I box call it, it still wouldn't happen. Okay. Got it. Because you can't respot these people because they don't know what these guys did. That, that's the reason I don't do it like that. Okay. But if it's if it's if it's a number we have, like if that's fifty eight instead of thirty seven, then that belongs that way. Right? We, now this is the mic. When we were at Notre Dame, you had the box scheme and then you I forgot your call you made here. But you had a call where he would protect, the center would protect it here if he fast flowed well, and pull back would that, compensate. Oh, yeah, now, now you're in two backs. I'm in two backs. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. I'm in two backs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have bo both systems. We have the system where he does this right. and the fullback has this one. We have this where he runs off the three. When the fullback runs off the three, we try not to double him. And the reason is it's so hard for this fullback to read him when we triple it. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Now, on the way to doing this, if that guy ever plugged our center to take, take him. him, that would be our fullback. Hand step. Same deal back here. Yep. I mean, drop step, club, grab, nice. run him to there. And on the center, I stab it. No Sam, no Sam plug, Mike over the top. Just right. Sam plug, take him now. Fullback. He's over the top, pick him up. Right. He's not clean. Fullback continue. has 17,000 assignments in this system. Now, you all want to get there, that's fine. That'll take a day now. I mean, no, that I've been down a that fucking path. day. I know. But, that four minute, that short yard, is that goal line, that coming off, you know, that's the world we have to win in. And you do too. Can't, you can't lose when you get the lead. You and we're still coaching. you got to have a system right there that's ugly. Right. And <laughs> we're, still, we're still, even though we're more, we still have a guy here, occasionally we're going to a, occasionally we're occupying that fullback system. Yeah. To me, I don't know that we have, we have too much there for you because you couldn't possibly teach that in teacher spread system and be up to date on both of them. But you would have to have one of those worlds that you live in, and that's the world you live in. And that's either tight end arcing and the fullback on the three, right. or tight end staying in the, in the box system, and he has the edge. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you gotta live in one of those two worlds. Right. And, and because we motion, we live in this world. This right. is our number one world. Right. This is, this is right. what we do. Uh, but. We don't have as many of these because we got too many helmets in there because we're being safe. So gotcha. one is working against the other. Gotcha. I mean, it is. You, know, you can say. So limit, limit. We got to, you know, for the occasionalness that we're tight end, fullback to the tight end side. Right. Limit your schemes. Right. In the end of the day, we'll ask, we'll we'll get because we're making good progress here time wise. I think at the end of the day, we'll take an hour or two, and we'll go spin that into that world, and I'll show you that world at its finest because. We're really, really good in that phase. And there's some interesting things going on there that are as exciting as the spread. And I'll, I'll get into that. Agreed. That's some good shit right there. Really good. Right tackle whenever you got to push, the read. But the read is clearly going out. Would you agree, mm -hmm. running back? Yep. He's definitely going out, so he's now going to read the three. See how they wouldn't let the center even push? Yes, sir. So we tell the center, you club up, stay square. Stay square. Now the back guard's in a man scheme, 
if he hadn't grabbed his back arm, what would have happened right here? Spun out and got out. So he would have spun out and made this play. Now let's take it from end zone. That is a man call by the left guard. Centers work front side combination. Tackles work front side combination. Tight end's helmet is wrong. Would you agree? Yes. It needs to stay on the outside leverage. That's right. When you do that, the runner has to immediately go to the three. Who do you tell him his back like? Are you telling him he even put him in his back step, second step driving it? Or are you just telling him is it nuts? Is it leg? Is it foot? That play side guard. Are you saying, what, what, what's your coaching point with that? With this? I have the outside half, and the center's got the inside half, and you are coming off, and your left fist really should ball under. He's got too much arm behind for me. But his helmet is stretching, and his right hand is exactly where I want it. The center couldn't push because the mic wouldn't let him, right? Now, the left guard cannot control the front, so what we're trying to create for the runner, Steve, is a two-way cut. We want him to have the ability to take the front gap or the back gap. If I were the runner, I would have chosen this gap, too. Yep. Now, let's go to the read, because this is what everybody does not understand about this system. Coach, why did you not chop the linebacker on the backside of the tackle? Or do you I think anymore? he felt he plugged him so fast okay. that he was not in a body position to suddenly adjust. Because mm -hmm. you've got to remember, athletically, yep. that's a mismatch. Yep. <clears throat> athletically. Now, here's what I want. I'm going to do this about four times, and then you guys will start doing it, because you, you'll see what I'm saying. That tight end was, is three and a half yards outside that hash mark. Yes. Okay? Just bear with me when I pause it. And you tell me where that backside two is. Outside of the dash. Huh? Three and a half yards now, outside the dash. Now, is that a cutback play? Yes. No. It isn't, in theory, because your aiming spot was exactly where you cut. I'm with you. Cut up like Now, does it look like a cutback? Yes, yeah, it does. I'm with you. To the team, it looks like a cutback. To the defense, it looks like a cutback. But he really pressed the ball at the hole, and in my opinion, 28 has made a great read. A great fucking read. Because he took one cut downhill, and he's going to get what he can get. There is going to be no negatives here out of 28 in, 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 in a whole season because he learned to stay with it. And then the quarterback's holding the back edge play. Now, the fullback assumed because he's there, he is the backdoor cut player. You understand? He becomes the backdoor cut concept uh, in, in everything that's going on. We want to cover him up and stay square. So the center you see immediately is trying to press back into him to give him downhill cut. Downhill cut. And, and, and that, to me, is what the whole thing is about. I mean, it is. Now, we went to one back, and I'm on the same reel. Why am I on the same reel? Because it's the same teaching to me. I just need to know, is it base or is it nickel? Well, the guy up at the top is the well backer. Okay? So the center's in Mike decoration. So the, the backer strong over here belongs to the tackle tight end combination. The left tackle now can't sip because he's got an end only man a backer. He does not chase anybody. So the center makes a strong side combination call. The back guard makes a man call. The tight end's going to create a read with the tackle. That ball should come to the edge. Why? What's his read tell? He puts the bins going inside. He, he puts the bins it. inside. Now, he didn't go down, but our helmets are outside leverage. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And we now are in a position. Who is now fucked up? The wide receiver, who happened to be a third tight end, second tight end. He needs to, to push crack on the corners. So he needs to push this corner on his way to the safety. He doesn't want to go inside because when he does that, what vision does he give to the corner? Now, the runner took care of it because he made him miss, but we know that ain't going to happen. That isn't fair. This guy out here shall push into the corner, then up to the safety. Those guys get a heavy dose of fucking coaching in this shit, too, now. Now, you want to hear some guys getting screamed at on this team? When those guys don't do what they're supposed to do, there are people on their ass like they have never heard. Now, you talk about getting their noses out of joint, because they are the problem by the, on all, everybody's team. In the National Football League and college as well. They think they're the stars. Well, you're a star, provided you do what your job is in the fucking running game. Otherwise, get the hell off our team. We just got rid of the two best receivers on our team after year one. We're down to two new ones, and they're better than the ones we got rid of, guys. Because those guys ain't worth having on your team. If they aren't team-oriented, we don't want them. We don't want them. I'm sorry. That's just the way it's been. And, and they will learn to do it. Now, does that mean they're going to be killer dogs? No. But he should push this crack, and, and away we go.
But the reed is clean. It is as clear as a day. Let's just look at it one more time from end zone. Is the tackle stepping where I said the tackle should step? Tell me. Yes. Is the yes. center aiming for where it should be aimed? Yes. Yes, he is. The right guard, is he taking outside half? Yes, he is. Sorry. He is powering the backside. We may call a back guard. Notice that back guard has lost some leverage. Yep. You see what I was saying about the leverage problem of a man call? Yep. Center has no idea where this ball is going. He's going to climb that backer and play as aggressive as he can play. Sometimes he cuts that, sometimes he stays up on it. This guy dodges, he'll go to cut. Because in that guy not being in the field lane, that's where the hole is. That's the Mike Backer's lane, you realize. Coach, why is the time we ask with the center? You know, he, would you want him to push this more? Well, let's just see. How much has he pushed him? See, I think he's pushed him as much as he can afford to because his backer's not flowing where? Yeah. So let's say the cut had to go in that hole. Can he afford to wait any longer to come off? See, I don't think he can. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that's perfect, but, uh, no, you no, know, that's, fine. Shit, that's, that's why we're here. That's what we're doing. Coach, would you have that backside guard lose more ground? Is that what you're, you were uh, No, I want to leverage step it. Okay. I think I'm playing. I, I think I've got him. He's a new kid. He's his first year. We got him from another team, and he had to learn all this in one year. And, and he, he's doing it like a robot. He's doing it like the way we coach it, and he forgot that the game starts with dipping. The game starts with being under the pads of the defender. You know, yeah. and he, he's trying to be perfect, and in being perfect, he ain't playing football. Well, that's bad coaching. That's my fault. That's my number one project this year is to get that left guard where he plays good and full speed. Because right now he's, he's robotic. That's, that's my job. That's what I tell you. I gotta get I gotta get straight. Now a lot of times this one is over under. Okay? So we may have called the play over here weak, or we may have called the play up there strong. But we're reading something in the secondary that tells us which way to go. And we read right. Because this was gonna be 19 strong and the safety has come down over here. Does that make sense? Yeah. When we went up there, we might declare it because all three of them are in the box. Because it's just two wide outs instead of three, right? Or it could have been however you set the system. Where's the read going? Outside. Outside. That ball does not go inside. That ball goes outside. Did the tackle put his helmet where he's supposed to? Yes, he did. Tight end probably didn't thrust it enough, but I think he felt the fast blow of the linebacker over the top, so he had to get going. Left guard's helmet is too wide. His aiming spot should be there, but as that helmet comes in, he needs to keep the leverage tighter to that helmet. Don't turn your shoulders and climb. No. I'd like him to get outside leverage right there. That's hard to do athletically, though, right? Because yeah. their guy is a better player than my guy. Footwork of the back. Looks like it's a tempo through the exchange point to a burst. That or is it a full speed? No, drop? no, it's tempo. It's tempo. It is. It, it's been trained. It, there's been so many guys. I, 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 to be quite honest, I have so much trust with this guy. I don't even know that I've checked his steps. But I think you will see that he has gotten the ball on the third one, and he already is ready because the read is already in his head. But what he can't do is bounce before he gets before the ball. Change, right. right? Because. We don't know what that seven's going to do. He right. doesn't know what that seven's going to do. But he's got a pre-read that is a good chance it's going to happen right here. Somebody asked about the back tackle man call. There it is right there. And he's going to go to his legs. Coach, will you coach his left guard when you say his head's too wide? It started fine. It started fine. But don't you think the defender's helmet has come in some? Yes. So what should happen to my helmet placement? It needs to tighten a hair. Because he can't allow that to split the center gap. I tie a lot of in with their footwork. Like you may be right. Step. You may be right. I, I just think he didn't adjust. I think he's robotic right here. And the thing I don't like right here is he didn't understand the play. The yeah. play says you keep outside leverage to the front side and you play angles on the back side. It's a hell of a job here, center on top. Well, you know, he, he just doesn't choose. And he's always worried about locking back in. I will tell you this right now. I had college jobs where this guy could not start. 
had a better center at Georgia, had a better center at Auburn, had a better center at Ohio State than this guy, okay? But he's mine, and I'm his. He's, he's as fucked with me as I am with him, but he's a tough fuck. Mm-hmm. And he ain't brave, and he's smart, and I go to war with him. And, you know, someday he'll wear out, but right now, he's my baby. So I got, I got to get him where he does what he does. I like the tight end stay in leverage. I don't like the wide out because when he did that, what did he do to the runner? Force him in. See, don't do that to the runner. You keep outside leverage on the force element in the play. Mm -hmm. Outside leverage. And and those are essential little points, you know, that get in. Now, I know it's hard. I mean, fuck, I'm not saying any one of those are easy. But we're trying to do it as best we can. Now, again, this could be over over. Safety's down. So we would be heading over here. Stiff arm of the guard. You've got a good view of this. Let's, let's oh, take the end zone. I don't know if we're going to see it there or not. All right, let's, let's, let's take the triple dip. This should be a club arm by the tackle. Notice how he doesn't come off the ball near as good as the rest of them. Yep. Because he can't afford to. Because 90 has threatened right. the inside seam, correct? Yep. Now, that's a hard read, but we tell yep. the runner this. You immediately go from one to two. Now, where's two going? Two is clearly going out, right? Mm-hmm. I'm coming back door. I'm coming back door. And you say the nose, which is now the three technique, look how far that guy is over there, guys. Where does the tight end start? Two yards inside the other hash? Where is the backside three when he made the cut? Right there. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. More time. Now, he's got, he, he can go either seam here. He can go either seam. He can go outside the fullback, inside the fullback. Well, we got 26 to deal with back here because we can't get to him. Right. Quarterback needs to keep going. He, he peaked too quick. Had he kept going, what, what do you think 26 would do? Frozen. He'd least. have frozen just a hair and not been a run supporter. I think the runner took a chance here. But watch him when he finishes. Because this is what he is. He's always gaining upfield ground. Upfield ground. The back on this one, Coach, when you talk, he's, he's reading one to two. So you tell him right here, he doesn't have a clean read You're on one. He doesn't have a clean read on one yet. Do you, oh. When do you go to their second no, read? No, 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 no. I, to me, as soon as he saw 95 play out, 90 doesn't give him a read. 90 gives him no read. That's, that's okay? what I'm saying. You don't so, get your first read. So in my opinion, right read. there, he immediately goes to his number two read, and he gets downhill. Okay. Because 90 hasn't given me anything, and part of it is because the left tackle can't hit him, right? Right. I can't afford to stretch him because he's threatening my inside seam. Now, let's take this cutoff tackle back here, because this was part of the stiff arm guard, right, all this? Yep. See how he's always gaining ground right there. And then when you go to throw, start moving and wiggling. Just wiggle and try to get as many pieces of that body as you can. The back guard knew right now, I would like that cut. He just couldn't get off the hand grab. See that 92 is grab? Yeah. He couldn't get off the cutting, but he needs to. He needs to teach that guy, you go in there, and we're going to cut you now. Is that more of a stiff arm? I you? think so. Now, sometimes this play is run with a man backside system and two back. And I just put this on here in case you're ever interested. This is also over-over called. So if we were running it that way, we'd come over here. If we were running it here, we'd go over there. You see what I'm saying? And we are now manning both guard and tackle. And the fullback now has the backer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's 18 strong man. It's 18 strong man. We just call it 18. The reason we do it is if the door, ball had gone back, there's a big hole back there. Right. You, know, you see what has happened. They can't stretch the hole. But the read did not take you back there. There no. ain't nothing we can do about that. Now, but is there a time you'd go to that? that I do that to? about every fourth week, and I bring it in the game. And it's in. It's over over. So it's 18 strong or 19 weak. It's 18 man or 19 weak for that week. But that week, we still carry the other strong play. But it's a way for the defense. And there's a great pass off this. We do not run it here. They run it at Denver all the time. And the re- that's the reason it's in. 
is you have one of the great play actions in football in two back, geared here. Because now you're manning this guy. So now the fullback is a defender, and you are selling the shit out of a great run. And what happens to all the linebackers right now? They're going to get us right in the chops. You can imagine the two deep system. And here, when it has been run, we have tried to release him because we do so much arc blocking anyway. And over here, they can't tell the difference. And we put him on that. I'm not so sure he's as good. Denver, I think, runs it better than we do. But that's just my opinion. But that is a big time play action pass. Because I promise you, those linebackers will hit us in that backfield. Because they ain't going to stop that play if they don't. They know that. they they got to get up in there. So now you've got vertical 16, 20-yard routes coming back to the ball against his own. You know, ain't. So, Coach, just, just want to go back to the back for a second here. Just a tempo. Okay, okay just Let's take in your, in your, 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 your all, you know, wherever you've been, you're coaching that tailback right now. He's, he's exchanged points out on his third step. He's getting the ball. Okay. How fast? Is he heading at that ish for, on his first three steps? How fast are they? And then once he has it, how I fast? I think it's he? controlled. He used that word, and I think it's a controlled step. And it'd be interesting when Ollie comes down to, to see how he teaches. But I'll tell you this: every back does this a little bit. Every right. back drop steps a little different. Every back's angled a little bit different. They all are a little bit different. And we've still been able to maintain it. Now we had one back at Denver that ran it so fast. We had to widen our landmarks. Clinton Portis was the running back at Denver. Get out of my hand. Yep. And when he was there, we had to, we had to widen every landmark two, three, four inches because he fucking ran that thing so fast that we weren't getting to the next level and he's already ready to read the cut. <laughs> we had to widen to get more width out of the whole play. Once he gets the ball, 100 miles an hour, well, he's on that third step, so the decision's made on that third he's step. He's making it. Well, he's going to get it. He's got a pre-read here. He looks at the seven, and he knows there's a chance for a bounce. When he has the puck on the ball, he knows the ball ain't going out there. Right. He still presses the same hole. He's now reading the five. Right. So now he's reading the seven. So he, in his mind, he already knows there's a good chance this could bounce. Right. Now, let's just say, did he do it right or did he do it wrong? Well, that That's right easy. there tells me to bounce the play. Yeah. Okay, so he has started to bounce. Now the seven plays out. If you're a runner here, you know what you're going to get told to do? You get that motherfucker down in that pipe, and you make three, four, five, and you be consistent. You do not dodge that. You do not dance and rebounce that play. That's, that to me is, right there, that to me is huge. We, 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 we've got that picture. We've had it a bunch. Right there. You're, you're going to get that picture. Go get, go get it right you now. You know, the seven really didn't give him the read. The backers were the one that gave him the read, didn't they? Yep. yep. And, 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 and his vision of how many times, the thing that we <coughs> insist is we only make one read. So if I bounce here, you better bounce that fucker all the way to that edge. Or you better get it down in that hole. Right. Okay? Yep. So is it a pass the third step? Yeah, it is. He's already started bounce. And now he said, hey, you know, I'm running out of fucking time right here. And the guard here should kept pressing a little bit more. Take that thunder off as much as you can. But that is a great downhill cut by that runner, in my opinion. I don't want anybody, you know, screaming at that because of the system. It is a bounce read from the start. Now the seven is played out. You know what they may have done here? They may have called that pinch system. Let's go to the end zone and see if we can see this. Yeah. See the defensive end? Yep. Mm -hmm. See, he's lined up wide. So the right tackle has combination with the right guard to that player over the tight end, and the center should be man on the backer. If the center doesn't get this call, he'll go triple, and he should not do that. He should go straight up through that pipe right there. That did not get sent. That's a new right tackle in the ball game. Notice the right guard is still using club, but do you see how easy the read is when you get that defense with a wide end? Why would you ever go T out there? You wouldn't. Because you've got a buck right here. You, you, these guys are fairly staggered, these guys, huh? Your right tackle. Staggered stance. He, he's a, he's a, a transplant that came in here, you know, it's on his last leg, and, and he's too late to change. Yep. See, the guards, how much of their insteps are 
deep. Not, yep. not very much. Right? Left tackle, not very much. Nope. The right tackle makes sense. Tight end, to me, is the perfect stance. Right. If, if you, had to, you had to set it. So you get your pinch. You get your pinch with your hand by the right tackle. Center C call man. Guards club and centers, same man. Right. He won't. Is he a vertical guy? Who? The center. Yeah, but he goes through front A. Front A. Front A gets sh sh uh, turned shoulder pads so that the pinch does not knock him off. And then we've got a man call here, I can tell just from the way this is clocked. You see the left tackle? Yeah. So now 44 is responsible for either of those two threats. Which do you think is the bigger threat he should take? Yeah. You ought to take the mic, shouldn't you? Yeah. He's still protected. He's yeah, the really center could climb and take the wheel. He's still going to protect the B gap in a sense. I would say he has the gap behind the left guard. The left guard got much better leverage with his hips here. Yeah. But obviously the back can feel all the shit coming out the back door. The keeper by the quarterback is great. Who runs down here? Who's that? Is that Duncan the tailback? Mm -hmm. How much here's, difference here's, between here. Warwick and him being two different guys? Because this guy can't play. He can't play in the system. He's a great kid. He just don't fit us. Too slow to hit the ball the hole. Uh, I'd much rather have a smaller, quicker guy than he is. But he's what I got, so I got to make do, and we're gonna get another one. And we got a choice. Okay. Here's a team covering everybody up, like you said. Uh, yeah. Um, Florida State does to you. Yeah, it is. For, Florida State's wide nine. Now this is this is the weak wide, which is no different in concept. It's pretty You see all the drop steps starting on the back edge. <clears throat> this is the here's the mechanics. Is what's hard to teach here is what 28 does as a football player. Oh yeah, sure. That son of a bitch down the hill, and you get all there is, and we go back to the middle. The players you get, and I know this is a fact because we get them after you get them. They want to go right there and make three more cuts. Yep. And you can't do that. You cannot do that in the system. Now, the quarterback is like this as well, right? Mm -hmm. What's he watching? Ball. Watching a ball. Yeah, he's watching a ball. We got, well, we got problems, too. You know, ain't nothing, ain't different. Combination between the center and the guard, the way we teach. Caught it? Left guard's great. Left guard's helmet could be a hair wider. Yep. Just a hair wider, but he had good explosion. He came off the ball good. This is the starting right tackle. See how his stagger is not near as much as the other guy? Yep. The tight end, I think, is perfect. The right guard's fine, left guard's fine, left tackle's fine. I think those staggers make sense. Backside guard tackle, this is, they're comboing this right now. They are comboing this because there's, in their mind, that's more of a three than a two. If that were an inside shade, they would make a man call back here, and the right tackle would have to call, call him off if he needed to with linebacker location. But they're working combination. Right guard should not pivot on that, but I know him. He's trying to knock them all back. That's my knock them back player right there. So if you're if you're the tailback right now, coach, okay. If the guard had done a, a finished stronger, right there, would you have wanted that thing to hit inside the ass of the right tackle? I don't. I don't, I don't think I'd, I would question that. I'd tell him, you find the crease that you want to get in, and you get in it, and don't double cut it. Don't double cut it. Make a decision. Live with it. Live with it. Because you realize those are ugly four fives. I mean, it, that, that's how you win football. Because if you do that and then you block the, the defenders downfield, you'll come out of there and you'll make 20s, right? And, and so if they don't make that cut, you're not going to make long plays. You're not going right. to make them. That's right. the way it is. Now, this one is probably over, over as well. It was called over here, and he's flipped it over there because of one of the safeties that he thinks is a threat. Fullback had a bad read. Should not have gone outside of that. He's reading just like the runner does. Yep. Should go inside of that. Runner made a great downhill cut. Well, you want occasion, back. Coach, if you feel the three technique has really widened himself out, call that off with the center and let him work more in conjunction with the right guard? I think that's what he did. Okay. And the 
74, the right tackle, he doesn't care whether it's 51, 22, 55, he's going to go at that angle and he's going to take the first one that blitzes in that crease right. and then go to the next one and then go to the next one. And we would like him to cut if he can, but athletically, there's a mismatch there, right? I mean, no matter how you cut it. He and 28 are not on the same page. And it's time for a keep. When our quarterback comes to the sideline, we would like him to say, are they honoring you out that side over there? And the answer is no, they are not. They are not, coach, they're not. Coach, how many people in the league run your style here? Jacksonville, Denver, and ourselves, and everybody has a little piece, but very little. And they can't get it coordinated, so they give up on it, which helps us, because it's too hard to put it in with all those other plays. Right. You see, if you put them in with other plays, guys, you can't do it. I mean, you, just, you, you fool yourself. You can't get it all top. You can't. So, you know, when I make these trips, I say, guys, hey, I'll give you this stuff, but I'm going to tell you right now, you put this in with counters and powers, we can strong. You can't, you, you can't stay on the front right still long enough to do all the things you do. So, you know, you got to make a decision. So, you know, Miami put the force game in. And then they hadn't stayed up with it, and they just changed our whole crew. Right. You know, because they, they tried to do too many things. They, they, they couldn't be great at anything, and it, it, it hurt them. SC stuck with it. The Michigan crew's going full time now for the first time. They've made a commitment. Yeah, they were, I remember they were, because they called, they were messing with it for a while. They're, they're going all the way. They're going all the way. But if they don't, Floyd's going to get fired. Shit. And this is what I didn't want to get in with the fullbacks. But, right. You know, we read just like the runner does. We right. start at the end. If the three goes out, yeah. our fullback does not have a guy. He is now a searcher. That's a very complicated right. system. And I don't know that you want to get into this if you don't do much too bad because this is hard. This is really hard. Are you, uh, is the center ID in the front side back? Center has declared this like a bare front. He's declaring this as double reduction. Yeah. What do you, what's y'all term there so I can talk to you when you spare bear? Okay. He's declared this as a bear front, and the reason he did is because the nose lined up square. Yep. And he had enough prep work done from the film that every time he squared, if the three technique here on the backside, who's really a four eye, he's probably pinching down. So he has one blocking scheme on that combination. It's always the back three, never double with the front guard. So he changes his concepts to the back three in any bear, weak or strong. Does that make sense? Yep. So we never double the three unless their stunt never snap of the game. You know, we just don't do that. We only work the back three in combination. So the front guard hears the, the bear call, and he knows the triple is going to be a back triple, not a front triple. So you see his club arm go. That's the reason I know he knows what he's doing. See how he clubs with his right hand, yep. the left guard. Mm -hmm. He all stretch a little more with his helmet, but he stretches, and that's what enables the fullback to read it like a run. Yeah. So our center is really responsible for 59. He can't get to 59. No, he does not avoid the one that's there. So the fullback compensates. So the fullback is a searcher for us once the three goes out. At the very start, he's on that same landmark, though, right? He Goes started outside at the defensive end. Yep. See, he started out here. On the first one, he couldn't get off that landmark, right? Remember that first one where yep. he played in? Mm -hmm. He got off, he stayed outside that landmark, and he didn't want to do that. He wants to quickly get to number three unless he gets a pinch down. And you can get some pinch down. Backside tackle. He should be drop step cutting. Steve Long 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 That's Long shitty Long. coaching, shitty play. The press is not as important as the third step decision. Bad ball. Oh, you know what I mean?
this had been nickel called, it's one back, then the left card has 56. You see, this, this would not have been a mic connotation concept for us because we would have used a word that would have told us we have the wheel backer. Mm -hmm. If we don't use the word, then the fullback has the wheel backer. Then the center left guard are working to 55, and the right guard right tackle are responsible for 55 up to 21, and we turn loose 58 on the back side. So that's how we spot those players with definition as to one back, two back, which you have to be able to do in, in, a, in a language because otherwise your players won't know how to call it. Coach, you're about to call it once again. Let's go back. When you're doing this, turn that insert here, and you got this, they're going really a 21, right? Is what you're saying? This that's combination? Right. Yep. 21. We never turn out away from a nine. How do you change it? What, what's the teaching with the guard different knowing you're coming all the way back to a safety or is it yeah they don't know they don't so that left, that. left guard do not know which ones they have spotted back here because they can't see them all so the center is gone c to 55. the right guard right tackle no they do not have 55 unless he blitzed a gap he blitzed a gap we're going to chop him down because now the left guard's going to 21. so left guard's footwork any different than no different. That's always hard to decide how far to get in, how hard, how hard to do that. That technique takes a lot of work. That's like third or fourth in our technique stuff. Okay. We use that technique a lot of times, and sometimes they get in too deep, sometimes they don't get enough. The important thing is that you shut this nose off, you know? Because yeah. defensively, they're counting with this blitz that that nose should have looped hard over the left guard's face, right? Yeah. I mean, he should have. He didn't. He tried to get there, but he couldn't get there. So once we built that wall, they're in trouble. I mean, they're in big fucking trouble. Now, our fullback is not a real thud player, as you can see. He, he's an athlete, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we don't win on those guys, but we don't lose on them. That's how we kind of approach it. Get square, stay square, try not to have your feet get knocked back, and we live with what we got there. Mm -hmm. We do not ask him to be a blunt. Now, if we have one of those 250-pounders that can do all these things, but we ain't got that. I mean, he's... He goes in, if, if this guy's hurt and duck, duck gets hurt, he's got to play. You know, he's going to have to run tailback. And those all are nickel rules, so he, he can pass protect as good as any of them. How big is he? How, big, how heavy is he? Uh, 21, 20. But not a, not a powerful guy. Mississippi State fullback. That was a tailback when he started. Now, it's 3-4 front, mm -hmm. so the left guard left tackle are working combination. Fullback's got the wheel on the ball, and that's the toughest one of all. Mm -hmm. Easy to drop step for the tight end in the 3-4 when you're right there, you see. I don't know that the read is wrong. This is the fullback at tailback because the guy did hit the fullback with the wrong shoulder, correct? Yeah. So even though that's not his read, I think what his reaction is is smart because the guy is trying to make him bounce, and what his rule is, bounce fast. Wide receiver went a little quick to the safety, but he hit it. Now you make it a corner tackle or a tailback, and that's the world we want. We want to put our backs on their corners. I don't like the, the speed that he went to the safety, but I know he saw him coming. See, I know he did. And so we would tell him, your first job is safety. Your second job is the corners. Push the corners as long as you can and still block the safety. The quarterback did not give us keeper action. But good downhill run. Now we really have to work hard on these combinations. The left guard to me has stepped too wide for a tight 3-4. The back guard and center work in that combination to 54, but 54 belongs to the right tackle. If he blitz back gap fast, right tackle shouldn't cut this fast. He's got 54. He's got B gap up through. He's got to run 54 to the back guard. Now, the back guard could come off here because the nose blade pretty heavy on the center. Yep. So, you know, there's some things happening in the 3-4 that make that a, you know, a much tougher play to teach. But double cuts, you know, in the long range, you'll have a good play. This, this turned into a bare front as well. Now here's a club tackle that didn't quite get it club. But to the fullback, that's not a pinch, right? Right. He's just 
run through our left tackle. So I think what the fullback did makes sense. I mean, I think it makes sense. But the left tackle has to be a better technique player than this. Notice the center's working a backside combination of a bare front. The left guard now is a club arm guy. Do that back in. Yeah. Don't let him in there. Don't let him throw you out. That's what he wants to do. He wants to throw you out and fall back in there. In my opinion, the fullback should not have gone out. He should have read 75 and gone inside of that three to, to 92. We had a bunch of that, you know, because just hard. The, we put this in mid-year this year. We did not really get the club part taught yet. So right. we had a bunch of fall-offs right. making plays. We tell fives and that's threes. why we'd really rather run the play weak out of, out of our formation. But if the backer's on the ball, we can't do that. Right. You know, if the backer's on the ball, we got to get over to a week or whatever you call mm -hmm. that. So, mm -hmm. but because he can get under a three from from I, right. It's hard when he gets over. No question. It is tough. It is a tough fucking deal there. Being a searcher. He read the three, you can see him right here. Yep. Now he goes and fits up and creates the two, three extra yards that you're going to get on a play. Combination between the center and right guard is well done. Back guard, he can read that stance. See how that guy would push him off right there if he cut him? The left guard. Yep. See, we got to run him with leverage. Run him with leverage. Left tackle's ass is going the wrong way on the cut. Yep. Tight end's ass is pretty good here. center on that too long? The center on that too long. Right there, Lee. Part of that's athleticism. Sorry. <laughs> he is what he is. I'm sorry. Yes, I'd like to see him do it, but but they understand that our fullbacks well, are going to read the same thing, see? And and if he if he had taken the other one, it wouldn't have pissed me off either. The other backer? Yeah. Even though the other backer hadn't threatened, the center would start back. But had he plugged, we would take him in center as well. I don't like the right tackle stopping on his club technique because see how everybody runs into him? Yeah. No. But at, at, he doesn't stretch with his helmet. That's a backup player that's playing. And the helmet is what has caused no stretch to occur, in my opinion. When you club, you must take your outside hand and your helmet and make him think there's width. Right there, he doesn't have a width read, does he? No. Defensively? He has nothing that makes him go out there. Let me ask you his tailback steps. Uh, so he's, this he's is a real guy now. Yeah, this, he looks bad. He don't look as play. real as good. He just looks real. He the looks the whole the whole, track, the whole thing is coming. The worst than that is he's too far behind the play. Yeah, See, so. Ducky is not in the hole. But guess what? I mean, that ain't what he is. He's a guy that needs to be in the downhills. And yeah. The, the, you know, the, the isolations yeah. and the powers and the OTs. He's a good player. He just didn't, he didn't finish because he doesn't fit the blocking scheme. I ain't got to get enough players to block him long enough for that fucker to get there. I'm sorry. He right. just, I just ain't got that. It ain't his fault. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, we all got it. We all got it's some. It had a play. Fullbacks point here. Fullbacks point should be at the defensive end and reading his helmet. The tailback drops up and goes to an imaginary tight end. We know which one we're reading. Now I can tell you why he's pointing them out. He's trying to force block this. Force blocking for us says the left guard has that backer and yep. the fullback now has that backer. They did not get this pushed across because the backside doesn't get it reset. We respot a lot of things. This is a big two-back system, so I don't know if you want to get into that. You know, mm -hmm. to me, it's better to over over and take the play and go the other way. I'm just telling you how I feel about the play, but they go together. That's why the left guard went there. But see how the right guard didn't know? Yeah. See, he could have easily gotten to that one, but he didn't know that. He didn't get that that call. Great couple of the runner, and when he got up, he got all there was at the end. 
Yeah. A lot of guys are going to dance right there now. They're going to dance. Yeah. Right here. They say I would have fucked up Sayers and, and the guy <laughs> in Detroit. I would have coaxed him right into the Hall of Shame. But, uh, you know, we have had a lot of fucking runners who just keep making lots of messy yards because we get them right up in there. We get them right there before everything falls apart. You notice there's a lot of helmets down in here now. There's a, there's a whole bunch of these. Three plate out, pull back. Three plate out, pull back. Go back door. Back door. He made that tough for his runner. Good pull back. See how the runner wanted to go back here? Yeah. Actual of the system, coach? Yeah, because they get to the line of scrimmage and then hit. You know, I mean, that's like heaven. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. like, we've never not had a thousand yards of run. I mean, it just, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. You get been going on too many places with too many guys. Right. They go somewhere else and they can't fly. Unless they run the system. It's just like for me in college, it's great because you know, I mean, you, I mean, get them through being spoiled and never coached, and then you're fine. Now, this this is all one back, uh, and it's it's based on the secondary, you know, as to what he wants to do. So it didn't get communicated because the left tackle, I mean, the tight end is going to the wrong place. So it's part of that on the road shit. So he has made a call which makes 53 mine. Okay? That term, whatever that is, and it's fair. Yep. So I got 53, and I'm going to use the triple out the back side of the bear. Front side guard, not club, right? Front side guard is going to stretch. We don't really club this as much as we just tell him you must knock his ass off that fucking ball in bear because he shouldn't be coming inside in a bear front. He shouldn't be. If they do, we four-man it, but we don't like to do that. We don't like that. So the reed's going quickly from one to two. Now it goes all the way to the nose because they've knocked the nose way out there where a tight end would be. If you realistically this three-man backside, you're, you're thinking of tackle one-on-one. It's just the guard's going right now. He's going to take over the nose, the helmet to helmet with the nose. I like him to cut it. But I know sometimes they jump on me faster than I can Steve, athletically so get down, but we work our ass off in that technique. And you can but say, well, you know, if you cut that, but again, come. look where this three is going to be now. I'm with you. Look where this thing is going to be. Yep. Cut up. So we declared it weak. Essentially, we run this because our trips passing game is too vital for us. So we carry this in every game plan. We don't run it enough, but we know we understand it. We know which ones we have. This is a tough blocking scheme when you've got three on this side over here like that. Because now the right guard's really at the point of attack. I mean, if you just look at the, the makeup of the defense. Yeah, this is where some of the ones we go This is one of the toughest things there is in that front. So the keys to make four right here so that you can throw the ball out of trips. That's why we we do everything we can to teach that. Now, is this play called when you said over, over, is this the same thing for you? Same thing. He, he went from 18 away. box to 19 safety. Or 19 box to 18 safety. The safety is the term for the wheel. So here we go to the wheel. Because they thought the secondary would roll strong. Too many defenders over there. That's the backside triple scheme. We use an Navajo. And how would you guys grade the right tackle? Yeah. That's horrendous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's as 
Bad coaching, bad play. Club arm to 76, does make the read hard because the guy didn't go in, he didn't go out. Mm -hmm. Runner made a decision, I'm bouncing this son of a bitch. When he bounced, he oh, lives with it. You get what we can get, go on to the house. If it's ever bare, we like to take it always weak. So he backs that bare toe. That's our turn. Triple backside. Left guard's takeoff. Easy read for the runner, right? The guy with the left guard. Easy. Yep. So I start with 94. 94 plays out. 78 is read down the pipe. Good job with the quarterback keep. Now he gets a box secondary. He knows he wants to go strong, so he, he's going to take it all to the strong side. Now it becomes the same play that we just got through doing all the teaching on top. And the trips people block the trip side. Looks like a hard read. Let's take a peek at it. Got to come in. Should not go out. Everybody agree? I agree. Got to come in. Got to come in. Tight end. How do you create that tight end? Let's look at it. Bad and just about taking it, finishing it. So, third. Yeah, I just don't think he's got enough thread. 78 is split us, but 50 made me come off, right? Yeah, it's. I got no choice. Tight ends is too soft. But the, the read. If you're not sure, on that. you're not sure. Make it, babe. Let's right. go. Let's go. <clears throat> Let's go. Want that on Gage Palmer. Should go to the strong side. Should go to the top. There's pinch scheme with the wide end. See what we're saying there? See the right tackle? Yeah. That's pretty much the way we described it. I want to get in, but I want to get in too deep, and I want to run into the crease that was created. I don't like that cut right there. See that right there? I don't like that. See I that don't think you needed that. The front side tackle stay on that pinch a little longer, or it's got to go? Uh, I think it's time to go. I think we're out of time. I think it's because of all the cutting. I mean, he got so far behind the blocking scheme. Ball should go weak. We took it strong. That's a misread by the quarterback. We will have nobody blocking this one backer out there. That's why it's on there. Anytime it's bare, we'd like to go that way, weak. Because we got nobody to block the guy over the tight end. Two four three defense wide nine end. Do you like pinching that or no? Is that too much for yes. the tackle to get yes. to that? Yes, we pinch that. If he's ever inside of the guard, we never pinch him. But if he's head up the outside, we pinch him to a wide end. right here to the tight end. Right. We're trying to read the second. I can't tell who these people are. But I can't tell where this person is down here. But if this is the, if this is the, the strong safety, we should go up there. But I know what he's seen probably. Over here. What's that 
Till last one more time. Okay. I think by the center's going to invite you then, right? Correct. It's Mike. Okay. Uh, unless this is an equitable call. I don't think it was. So. What about the badge? We've been back here, coaching the back on this one. I think it's a bounce, 72 so it's inside. Rain. As long as you know that's everything overflows. Uh, I'm just, I, I look it's at it because of that seven technique and how it's much tough. do you get into with a tight end trips like that, that even though you got that seven, how it's much tough. are you going to get screwed out leverage You're to right. that receiver? You're System, but once we nickel it, it's automatically boxed because the personnel is on the field. So that tackle, he did not read that as an in outside, so he, he, he called it. Center C called it for 59. The right tackle is declared for 53. Combat the backside. And we are set to the backside. Because we've got 84, 94 to 37. Now your guard backside, like you said earlier, game. that guard, what calls, what game. calls he gonna make right now? He called man. Even Seven with, declared 58. Oh, so he's right now even with a three, he's on a man. Okay. So the left tackle knows that there's nobody threatening. Now here's where numbers get issued. See, this is why I need a nickel. Why I need nickel 18 said, which is the same as 18 box. We make one in nickel and we make another one in face because of all the rules that fit in those two groups. And the group the box play usually comes out of two tights for us and two wides. And this one is a three wide system. So they play substitute defense because we substitute. Now, if you substitute on first down with three wides, will they go automatic nickel for you? First down. Automatic nickel and first down? No. no. Teams are going to play us one way or We don't see a lot of substitution off our personnel. They're going to have their plan and they're going to play it. So it could be base personnel or nickel personnel? Yeah. That would be heaven for me if I could do that because then I could call them all the same way. You know, I know yeah. what's on the field. It's when they run a DB in there. You know what our problem is, Coach? I was, I was going to say something because we're going through this right now. It's just. Really, for us, more than personnel is is our personnel. When there's a tight end involved, and when there's not a tight end involved, call side. Right. That's where we. Be, that's that's where our. Did, that's why we did the two different terms. Yeah. And that's the what term we is 18 do. box. Right. That's two tight ends. The other one is nickel 18. Right. They're both strong. They could be over or they could be pass check. There are too many in there. There are certain things that would make us do any one of those. But that's why we did it that way. We felt it was a, it's the responsibility of the upstairs people to get to the quarterback and the coordinator with the play call because they saw what personnel went on. I mean, I'm starting to think that you know we're, we're right on the money what we're doing except one thing. We want to run open side zones. You know what I mean? One back. You need to turn it. Teams, it's a teen series. It stays teen series so that we always get the first backer in the box. And if we don't want them to come for that first backer in the box, then we make this, you know, a tight end series, a 60 series play. We, 80 series, just keep it what it is. It's our two back weeks that I play. It's just what it is. I, to me, that just watching this and just kind of listening yeah. in our system, I think we got it already in a team series. We don't really, because the second digit tells us tight zone, wide zone, mm -hmm. and we have tags for options. So for the offensive line, it's a lot easier if we keep the teams, you know, team, when we want to run, with no tight end, no tight end attached. We want to run that play. We call it team series. We'll always ID the first backer in the box. We'll be in good shape. Because if we get stuck with a four down, three backer system set on that box with no tight end, we still got to come for that Sam. And we have code words that take us off of that. You know what I mean? 80 series is our two back weak side deal, and tight end side is 90 series, and move on. But it's kind of doing what coaches do, I think. You know what I mean? Well, I had to do this for my players. You know, I, I didn't have any way to, to 
didn't know how to spot which ones were mine. And I, I only did it because it made sense to me. And I taught them that way. And now they would like, I think, sometimes to change them. But I got it so ingrained in their heads that they, they could never change it. Either. I mean, they'd have to fucking they'd have to send some of these guys to the psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the way I'm afraid of it. I'm so old and antiquated, and I can't figure out yeah, how they know it. Because this is not, guys, let me just say this. This is not the picture of the lab and see right here. This, this is not the real world. You don't see that shit. They see, that center seat, those three in there. This right tackle seat, these three out here. That left tackle seat, that end. Whoever is supposed to be in there. Right. That's the only thing. You know what I'm saying? No, no, that's why. Yeah. Team, keep our team series to place like the first back in the box. Keep it that way. And that's okay. cool. And you have really an option series. No. Just any pressure off the front side edge there, Coach. He belongs to the wide receiver. So how does he block any front side edge pressure? Okay. First of all, you'll notice if we don't motion him, he's going to take a tighter split. You see where he is? Yeah. And most people would not put him that tight. No. What I'd like to do is line him up over here and motion him over there. Because I can always tell him how far he could go out based on what he sees, right? Mm -hmm. Right here, he can't be four to be wide because, see, they got two of them, right? The safety can be down yeah. or the safety can roll over the top from right here. So he is responsible in nickel for the first thing outside of that box. He's got it. He would that be the same in box? Yeah, but it's usually a tight end for us in box. <coughs> so that is a trained tight end, and it's always trips in box. Because we must set up our, our trip fast. We have to have it. So we use one as a nickel concept with three wides, and another one as a concept with two wides. And we, just, we try not to do that so that we don't get them confused as to what they have. I'm sure you have a system that's in place that if you can get all the verbiage where this makes sense and the numbers, then they can fall into it. Yeah, that's what we just we, we just changed. Where we were this season coming from, a true spread to adding a tight end, to adding a tight end fullback, to adding those things, that got screwy because we were in a spread four receiver verbiage that you start adding a lot of things that doesn't always make sense because it's numbers are just getting too a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So where now we have, that's what we're just talking about, we've broken up tight end oriented, an open side insert, uh, an option series, or a spread zone series. So it's, so it's, it really comes down to me, identification for the offensive line. They know where to start to count, who they have to account for, period. Well, how, how do these wideouts have a problem with this too because they got to know what their element is. They have to. Right. And we never turn that out to a DB unless we have a fullback on the field. And our tight end release out there. That, that guy right there never belongs to us. He just doesn't belong to us. That's how they know. And right there, he's got a problem. Tell him stay outside leverage because they'll play you if you stay outside leverage. That's perfect. Now, do we have anything in with that tight end? All of a sudden, you have that box that that guy gets up on the line of scrimmage. That tight end's got to go out. Well, generally, here's the way we do it. Here, here's the way we explain it. If that box guy's fucking around, that's what we need to say. If the safeties are too high, and leave it on, strong. If the safeties are moved over strong, that guy that's fucking around, he may be blitzing. He's moving a little bit. And that's why it's over and under for us, box and safety. That's why. So that we know whether there's a blitzer coming from outside the package. Does that make sense? Yep. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And no way that backer that's walked out with the trips guy is going to blitz if there's no safety down on that side. If there's no rotation. So that's how we read it. Now, when we get into this, we live with what we got. So when we call nickel turns, we live with it. Now the wideouts have to assume that role. Is this the easiest way, a short split? I'd personally rather motion over there than any other way. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. That's just my favorite. The problem is, 
do you want to do that in your your tree route, in your your passing routes? You see. Well, and then do you want to line up with a split this tight to run some of your routes? But they have to look the same, or they don't they don't honor the run. See, every time we've because we've never checked it, uh -huh. so we're always motioning to protect well, that's, that's, an edge. That'd be the answer. This way, I do. The way I do. Do you like this two no, by two that's... more than the three by one? I like them both. Flexibility you get and added with the tight end moving, which is still my favorite, is to move him to create trips and start him in trips and create double. Mm -hmm. Now you have really taxed them because they don't know which side to bring your blitz off of, right? I mean, they don't know because the decoration's all fucked up. Now that's why I asked you, do they come from the field or do they come from formation? Or you got you got to kind of decide that as you get your plan together. If I thought they were coming to the field, I could always be right. I could run this play into the boundary if I could. Because <laughs> now the wide receiver. You like this away from pressure better than in pressure? Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that was, you got no lead blocker now. You know, anybody that puts this from the outside in, it's got to belong to the line. All right. Two. He's a backer, so the right tackle tight end has to adjust to him, correct? One that doesn't have a helmet, so one that came down a weak side. He's running 18 strong. The right guard's going to work the front side combination. Tight end's going to turn it out, because that's a deep out of linebacker. It's a substitute defense, and the center's declared the other linebacker. Because if that's a nickel call right now, and that's a DB, that's a nickel you're out. That's, that belongs to the wide receiver. Right. I got it. Yeah, it's critical. That's really kind of a critical point. Right it there. is. It is very critical. And I think that's why it's essential they understand what's on the field. But the reads are the same because that's a buck on the ball to, to, the, to a runner. So he moves yep. down lineman over the right tackle. Right. Clear read, right? Yep. That's a clear read. I'm going to take my third. I'm going to plan. I'm going to go down that pipe and I'm going to get in that gut and I'm going to get all I can get down in that seat. One more time, Rick. This is a, this is what we are more than anything else. This ball should bounce. Did you read? That's an easy read. It is, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to defend him because I got some rules too. But I want to give you here because I think he's no point. I'm not sure this is what we got. This is what this is what this is what screwed up for us, Danny. Hang on one second. Let me see the top. Can you tell me what this is? First and ten. This look here is a, is a. Now we use that instead of tight end. I'm in our fullback, but they're kind of an interchangeable position yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways yeah, right yeah. here. Right. Coming over. Mm -hmm. What would get you? And, and maybe it's the tag. Go out to the DB. What would get you to want to go to the DB at time? I mean, it, it would it would be the difference for you to get you to the TB DB otherwise, or to get you to insert. I have to have two backs. Go to the 90s or, or no. For us, Danny, this has got to be a team series to go out or a 90 series. If we're treating him as a tight end, it's a 90 series. If we're treating him as a as not, then he goes out and it's a team series. See, that's what I'm saying. That's, to me, I mean, looking at it. Put that center on 55 right now and just bang it. You're going to rotate safeties. You've got to make it. you really got to make it 14 or you're just saying it's 84 on the hanger. System. Or you call it 80 and you trade that's two back insert. Or you say 84 hanger. So you're, 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 you're putting pressure on the angles of all of these so that that guy right there doesn't have to block. And you can't do that. But why not? It doesn't make sense. 
makes sense. <laughs> well, it's got a job to do. Now, you may have to orchestrate it so that this week, the best of the blockers is that inside guy with the formation call. Okay? Or the best of the blockers is this guy, and this guy, this guy. Okay? Going back to yours. Okay? They make five. Mm -hmm. Everybody shuts up. Mm -hmm. Coach coaches him by himself. He make five. We all shut up. Now, if he asked me, I said, I think you're wrong, but he make five. First downs, shut up. It's more important to make first downs than it is to make the right read. So if it's third and two and three, and he made a hard inside, that's the reason I went back to that down distance. Mm -hmm. Now, he would have gotten me because that, that second run right there is going to be five and a half. Yeah. I shut up, you deal with me. Yeah. I don't get it now. Third and two, three, four, he makes a hard downhill cut and makes first down. Let's walk back to the huddle and let's shut up and let's go. Now, yes, we don't. Second and two, three, four, first downs, first downs, first downs. You're staying in this prerogative. When you do, you create the world that you really want to create. Right. Now you might break throw the ball. Because you, you know you're going to have a consistent game. Passing is yes, no. Running has to be yes, 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 yes. Doesn't have to be long ones, but it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then 16, then 14, then one, two, three, one, two, three, 18, 12. The other game's going to be 20, zero, sack. 13, 19, sack, drop. Right? I mean, there's too many negatives. Don't let the running game spill into the other factor. That's how you, you create upsets. That's how it's a team, but not as good as you can beat you, in my opinion. That's that's a philosophy we've worked very hard on. I think, I think we're on the right path with it, but who knows? Plays aside right now, never mind who gives a shit what we call what. If that guy right there is a fullback, okay, that's that me. picture right there. That's 18 week. I don't, I don't even care. I mean, I'm going to ask you philosophically. I don't okay. give a shit what we call anything. Okay, that's a fullback for you right now. Okay, what do you? How do you want to handle that picture right there? Do you want to insert him? Do you want? What do you want to do? Okay. That's a fullback right now. If you had called. Nickel. If you would call Nickel, he would be responsible for 55 and the center would be responsible for 52. Okay? If you had called 18 week, he had 55 by himself. He would not have the type of combination. You have to read like a runner. I don't like that play without somebody holding the back edge. Right. I don't right. like that. Right. Because that ball is going to bend back here, and the quarterback, even as fast as our son bitch is, that guy will fall back in there and make that play, and I won't gain any consistency. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I have trouble ever saying that without a tight end and a two back, that I can ever put him on the DB. Now, if you give me two backs and a tight end, I can do that, and I'll show you real after fucking real, because that's where we live. But we could not do that out of. Too bad. Here's what I want to ask you. We couldn't do that. Here, see, here's Coach. We couldn't function. And here's where we're kind of in this hybrid now, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I bet. we're in a hybrid I bet. because because if we want, if we could treat it, we could use a tight end personnel mm -hmm. and we can do what you're doing here too. Mm -hmm. But we've got that flexibility where well, we're starting to get that flexibility. But here's the advantage right now I think we have okay. to answer my own question. I'm asking your opinion. Okay. Okay. Is we can run, let's say, and insert and not have to worry about holding that back edge like you're afraid to do because they're afraid of us pulling the ball and reading that sucker so he don't really come down okay. like a bitch. Which is what I want, I want to, I'm interested in. And that's why we can insert, to me, we can still, we can have some chance to, if we want it with a fullback personnel type of guy and a spreader okay. set to insert and hold him a little bit and get, and get away with it. But our fullback would have to stop behind that guard and enter. Absolutely, that's and the that's the dilemma that's we've had. Is because sometimes we we can't get them in this position and do that. Well, there's insert it here though. You, you know, can go to the edge and insert it. Well, they we still we still they still read it like the stretch play though, uh, even to the weak side on an insert. Kind. It's read like a stretch. That didn't change. You're just reading how you insert to him. 
based off of that end. I'm saying on it's the not an ISO. And on the back side. You're going to insert this right here. Yeah. You're a man call on the back side. The back side tackle now. He's, he's, man, so the end. he's, right. he's just sitting Correct. right to somebody else Correct. and you're on 53. Right. Exactly right. Okay. But the he, theory he of holding the... He can keep the chaser from chasing you know, flat. But with an insert thought, <laughs> and this is where my question would come with us right here. If we had an insert called weak gear, Steve, that mm -hmm. DB has come down now. We get anger. Are we moving over one? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what we would, we would make a call, Coach, a hanger call that would take him, put him out here, and move us over one. How do they do that? Got to, you know, make a call. How do they do that? How do they know to do that? How do those guys out there see what that guy over there is doing? You mean to tell me a guy moving across there is going to go out there and all five of them fuckers are going to change people in the middle of the play? Yeah, I don't think they're going to make that football. I don't think that's possible. I mean, my brain, that ain't possible. Mm -hmm. How would my guy know that? I don't see this, guys. That center sees that fucking that two technique and the three technique and one backer, whoever he declared. I'm now going to change because of something that happened over there? How, how do all that get communicated? But you're putting it on the wide out every time. No shit. He is the removed tight end if that's a fullback. He is a flexed tight end in concept here. Mm -hmm. Right. No doubt he's a flexed tight end right now. I don't understand that. No, no, no. I mean, the next wide out, not in this picture. Right. But right now, your scheme, you're you never he's... combined. If you're making the insert call here, 55. You're calling uh, 18 week. Okay. Okay. You are that wideout has to handle that any type of exactly. no matter what. Right. Wherever he is, he's the wideout. Exactly. He, and if he's standing right on the line of scrimmage right here, exactly right. coming off the edge, you got to get out of the play. Or you had to motion, motion over. over. But else. not when it's on defense, defense though, because you huh? put you put that an odd defense, three four defense, you put that fullback on that overhang. Oh yeah, because that's a different. That's, that, that puts us in a whole different schematics because he now becomes the buck on ball. He has to be the fullbacks or the tight ends, right. right? So he is, and now the next DB belongs to the wideouts. See, so they learn they learn it from two back to start with, and then they take their three back rules. I mean, their uh, one back rules, and they they know they have replaced the fullback. Right. So if we if we put three wides out there in any form or fashion. Okay. That guy is a safety call guy for us because he has to handle that one. Okay. He just, there ain't no other way to do it. Right. And, and, and this guy has to assume the role of that player from outside in. And it can be done this way or it can be done this way. I mean, it can be done all those. Right. So they have assumed the role of that fullback. And if the tight end is not in the picture and you've got one moving, he assumes the role of fullback or tight end. And those guys are responsible for the force element to the defense. Right. Yes. I, I, I could not understand it the other way. I would not know how to get mine to go to theirs in a motion call. I don't, I don't see how you do that. I, I just, I can't in my mind. I can see how we could say, oh, let's do this. But, I mean, how do you know that? How do you, how do right, you with a motion call, I'm with you. How do you do that? With a motion call, I'm with you. But if it lines up that way and it's not a motion call, I mean, then you're just blocking birds just like you did in odd defense. You essentially, in odd defense, had, had, that, had that fullback block that, that, that back around ball. Okay, let's just put this picture up here right here. And we have two over here or one? One. Well, he could be a fullback. I know, but I mean, just. <sighs> to get him to go to that guy, you just fuck those five guys. No question. I agree with you. There's no way for this guy to not to block a safety. That just don't make any sense. I, mean, that, 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 that I agree with you. Hit. That didn't hit my brain. Uh, you made all angles horrible, and, and their ability to um, designate which one that they're working their combination to so that he can stay off that to that. And the answer I always have when we start our nickel runs is, you know, let's do this with the guy because then he can extend depending on what he sees, right? This is called five and ten rule, you know, where he, he knows that he's got to stop right here because now he can block that every time. 
but he doesn't have him if he's a linebacker. If he's a linebacker, he's, he's this guy. Jump right on to some keepers. Yeah. It's a good conversation. Oh, it is. It's, it's, this, this is what this is what the whole thing boils down to. And everybody can't see everybody else's because that's the way we are. responsible when he makes an inside cut you're never responsible for if that guy makes a tackle outside in what you have to do is stay on that leverage because if that ball bounces that's where the big one's going to happen that's where the big fucking for the wide out. yes yeah so always keep outside leverage now you always keep outside leverage yeah. now this left tackle does not have 53 he is sifting from in to safety right. he gets right there he's not gonna pass that something i can tell you i'm not here yet. You know, that didn't knock out that belongs to somebody else. In reality, the center's taking the other guy. That isn't the one he took, but he just played football to me. You know, left tackle just played football. I mean, that's just the way the game is to me. This, this ultimately, to me, comes back on the back. We're going inside. It Where does. It does. But down, down let's down see how close we are to five here because, you know, as I told you, you know, I'm, I'm going to scream because <laughs> he makes the wrong decision. He made, he made a good, bad decision. He made a good five. <laughs> That's right. So here at the top, you know, that comes down. We're going to turn that out, and then we're going to read off the three. The ball never goes outside. He's going to go one to two very quickly. Center's got to get the two. No matter who's there, whether it's a linebacker or a down lineman, you treat, still treat them the same? Like that, that linebacker walks down and chokes that tight end? You always turn out to the play. Okay. To the play. Away from the play, we turn loose the wide guy, and the tight end cuts off the one that's on him. Okay. So that, that rule never changes because we never have, we don't, we're not, we don't flip people. We just say, it doesn't matter who they are, you two must turn out. And then the runner, you know right now under that lead, you're reading three very quickly. Even though you start with the outside guy, you immediately get to the three, and you're going to run off that. I think he's reading fine. Going on there. I think he's reading fine there. See that? We, we, we do a little of this where, you know, our quarterback is such a great athlete, we'll move him around, and we're actually direct snapping to the tailback, which is your spread backwards, right? It's the same principle, and just do, do, do things like this that don't mean anything. It's just nickel running. Mm -hmm. So here's a wide end. So the right tackle should work combination with the right guard. Pitch. He did. Center should not come on with him, though. He should not. He did not get communicated. Bad coaching. 27 belongs to the wideout. Let's see where he went. Let's see. Oh, we were guessing that he's going to go for seven. Oh, that wideout's coming. He's trying to get in there more. What, co coach, on the center on this one now. He should not work combination front side any time they call guard tackle pinch. Yeah. Pinch. So he should go man straight up to the box and look for the first thing from the And so he's really just looking for whatever shows right Anything there. that comes from this back edge. So the left tackle is going to go down and wall on the 47. The wideout was in a position to hold off. That's why he lined up right there. And seven is just trying to draw the crowd. <clears throat> We, we, we were not good at this at our tackle spot when the tight end was with us because we couldn't feel him. We can't stay that long. We've got to climb. Right? We've got to get climbing up in that hole. This happened with the tight end being off. 
see how the tackle's yeah, waiting on him to come on, and we can't stay this long. We got to leave because we got 55. Center's got 54. The back tackle assisting from end to 23. The wide out still trying to get to 23 on the backside, but you don't know whether he can get there or not. That's what saves that eighth guy down or seventh guy down in that set. Quarterback is fucked us with no key. What are your thoughts on the ability to make that block that goes to the the off the line tight end that tackle? I think if I coach it better to what I call ricochet the guy, if my tackle knows he doesn't have one, but he got a strong call. He's got a strong call, so he knows he's coming. Okay? If I hit him left and turn him over, I think we'd have a better system. I think what happened is we went out and practiced it without being aggressive with the bags and things like that. So that we went out and it all fit up real clean and shit. It took all the right, that, 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 and the drills on it. That ain't that bad drill. You know, you got, you got to simulate what you're doing. And, and, and we haven't given our tackle a chance to realize that he can't wait anymore. Because our runner ain't got tackle, right? He, rrr, rrr, rrr. I'm, I'm screaming this. I can't hold out there. I got to get off. Now the tight end's going to have to get, but it does help me move the tight end around, which makes them get all fucked up about their blitzes too. You know, they can't, they can't set them. But this is my favorite way: starting three, and then bring it over to here. You know, if I had my brother, I, I'd rather do this. Now, the center did the same thing here. He's in a man scheme. The right guard's trying to get to 36, but we can't get there, so we got to bump it off and turn it into a bare front without a call. Right. They pinched over here. The left tackle got in too deep. Right. Who's he pinching? Is he pinching the 50? He should be pinching the 29. But here, here's one of the things that happens to substitute fronts. Which one of those came in as the weak side backer, and which one of those came in as a strong safety? And we usually know that by numbers. We've usually studied that. But occasionally you'll play a team like New England who's really well drilled. And they'll have different personnel groupings every week. So that just when you think you know which one's covering the back, which one's covering the tight end, which one's covering the other, they're supposed to come out. And then all your numbers just went to shit. You know? But that, that's coaching at a level that's unbelievable because they can do that. They, they just have that kind of players and brains. And I thought we made some good, good adjustments. I just thought. I think the left tackle felt 36 was a bigger threat than 29. And maybe it was, you know, maybe it was. But the wideout got leverage on the one that he wanted. Well, now the read's fine. Get back to the wideout now for a moment. Okay. Zero blitz now, you know, this is bringing the whole house and everybody's in man coverage. You know? I think the wide great right there. Got Brian Finner. Yeah, he's one of our three wides. We have two young ones that are going to be great. There's a little kid out of Ohio State and a kid out of uh, Memphis. They're going to be just, that's the three best blockers. Just while we're in the middle of the stretch, I'll come back to this, but I want us to look at our QB and let's talk about the difference between this and go. Because this, this is the biggest plays in football for us. And then what y'all may find is you may need some of these. Okay, now here's what's been called. He has called a two-back fullback lead, and he has labeled it with a term for the wide receiver that you have the corner on your side. Mm -hmm. You have it. And I may keep it, I may not. I'm reading what I see back here. I see no defender, 
from the secondary, right? He's already up there and stretched to the top, right? Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yep. And he has, we have given him the idea that they are playing and honest or they're not. Okay. And so he's calling the huddle to play. And he is told wide out, you brought the corner. And then I'm coming to you. Okay, so. So how much different is this than your read? Right there? Yeah. Conceptually. It's, it's, it's conceptually, it's going to be the same. The top, that outside wide out is always, the backside wide out always blocking for a quarterback deep thrust, always. No matter what? No matter what. Even if you didn't declare it? Well, we read it every time. We read it every time. Okay. Okay. So, so that, if I read it and declare it, I'm not a bit different than you are. If you're declaring it right if here, our wide reading, out is doing stuff. the same as you. Then you're the same as us. What I do, what, what we would do in the gun, how, how does he read it here? Is he kind of guessing? We court? have alerted him alerted what we've that. seen, and we have told him to tell his wide out QB, and nobody else on the whole team knows that it's not being handed off. Mm -hmm. okay. And now, you're, you're assuming, though, the end's going to chase down one of those things. We have had enough go on in this game to tell us they're not playing honest. Yeah. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean everything's perfect either, right? Because he's got to make a big decision. Now, part of our turning our back on the guy makes him chase more. Mm -hmm. So what I've got to find out as I study you guys is, am I giving up more than I'm getting, or can I do them both? Because I want them both. Now, why are they chasing this front? Well, this is our four-minute offense. We're putting the game away. <coughs> this is short yardage. This is... Uh, red zone where we want to have everything going we can possibly have. We have a keeper, we have a kill, we have two backs, we have nasty, we have ugly, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because this fits so many places that you can win the game. Now this quarterback can't run as fast as, as your guys. I mean this, this guy runs, you know, he runs 485, 49. You know, he's just a guy. Mm -hmm. But now he has he's been told that 98 is not being honest because he really isn't being honest, correct? He, he's got the quarterback in this defense. Oh yeah, there's no no doubt about it. Okay, now now you put that same animal out there that is now by definition here he's gonna keep it here he should have given it. Okay? He's got two outside. Right he's got two outside. outside. That to us makes no sense to even do it. But we have an athlete, guys, that he is so freaking fast. But this time, the wideout didn't even get the call. Because if he had got the call, you gotta touch him. we got to touch him, right? So we know we're on to something because this guy, even if they fuck up defensively, if they chase one little bit on him. Mm -hmm. Broke leg. Huh? I mean, that's dangerous. It's a broke leg. Okay, I mean, it, 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 this is an amazing film when you take this thing and study them all. And, and I'll show you how we've incorporated it the other way as well, because right there, there's no extra player over there, because they're starting stopping the two-back run. Right? They've had it stuck down their pipe, down their pipe, down their pipe. Here they come. You know, and if we'd have given it, handed it off, we'd have made five here. You know, we'd have made four, five, six. Mm -hmm. But... I know what happens when he gets that one right there. It's 30, 40 foot. That's right for us. Now, 18, that's what explosion three. runs are to me. Mm -hmm. Now, what can you do off the ones you've got that make this happen? So that's why I'm so intrigued with the spread because he, he's, a, he's a great gun player in, in the things he does out of gun. I'm now putting him in the best situation he can be in to play games. Our thought, you know, originally when we did it here, you know, for us with the gun is, you never want to be the play behind. You never want to call the keep. Well, we all of a sudden, you, you see, we, well, you see the chase, you have a great right. feel for it, and you call the keep, and the guy was honest at one time you called it. Or you had yourself what you wanted with the, you know, ours was the negative play. It has been amazing how many of these we've hit right now. Because we got it another way, too. So you see our, our center right tackle? 
See, they don't know shit, right? They nope. got no friggin' idea. And as a result, does does the New Orleans Saints know? Do they know? They don't know for sure either, right? They don't so know. Just, our, our, just what, as you go on that, rewind that one more time. The only difference you're going to get with us being from the gun and what you'll see is they're now going to play games with these two from the gun. Oh, we already get it. Yeah, you're going to get the end flying back no, over time. We, we play tap we get that system. But we have a system there too, okay? Yeah. And I, I'll show you that one. Because if we prepare for the team and we know they do that, we have a package that's, that's handed off that we will, we will stone dead Cody if we get it. So I, I'll give you that when I get there. But, I mean... For me not to do this, guys, is like stupid. Well, this guy, yeah. That's that's just... Are you shitting me? All right, and, and then well, we search the world over for one of those guys. Oh, fuck. But you have to be able to use it within your parameters. Yeah. But two or three of these have been the other guy, too. You know, they can barely run. I mean, the most intriguing but thing. It's hard to make 12 yards, 13 yards. I mean, kid. With guys that run 485 in the National Football League, are you shitting me? Fuck. You know, I love, what I love about it is you've got the component of the uh, tight end fullback lead stretch play, which keeps you secure for four strong. It's a great play. Then if you out of the gun can read that weak side in, you slow down, you potentially slow the defense down, and you have everything you want. Exactly right. I've got the nickel purpose. package of run, one back, three wides with a read. And I ain't done one thing to the people up front. I have not made them learn one new thing. And I turned this film on when I got this damn thing, and I'm going, what the fuck? Now, there's your, there's your game. There's Here's an exchange. Right here. we'll Here's an exchange. We'll yeah, see guys. this all the time. Yeah, you, yeah, you just keep exchanging that son of a bitch with this guy. Right. Yeah, you just keep exchanging that son of a bitch. You know, he runs too fast for that stuff, you know? They better run up the field and get him. Yeah, see him at 56 here. One more time. See all the different names. I guess we see more 56 very, I mean, he will not do that. He's he's strictly the quarterback player, and he's going to run and contain his ass. Not going to lose the run game. Okay, well, I'll show you how we do that. But I, I, I'll give you, I, I'm going to give you two things. And, but but uh, He would cause, he to me, for us in our system, he, would, he causes so much issues. A defense has to, they can't not respect a guy like that with our system ever because if you cheat at all, that defensive end, when we would read the DN, they with a guy like him would even be hard pressed out of the end on. But they now would you have, have to have a one back set and a two back defense concept right. against him doing it both yeah. places. That's one right. under center. Yeah. They can't do that. In a, that's what I'm starting to tell you. To me, they can't do If you run 18 strip, uh, or, uh, no, 18 force read, when you put that fullback in that tight end strong like that, it's fucking unsound, I think. You know? And so now, how do they stop at all? That's the difference. It's not, you know what I mean, Danny? Well, I'm with you. I, That's I, the component we've got. For you right here, this defensive end, if you're in the gun with a guy like him that you have, you, you, you keep he's it done. Time. He is you keep done. It every time. So what you'd end up you seeing. You would make him clean up. What you'd end up seeing is defensive ends having, as my thought would be, is you'd see him in the gun, defensive ends, with any sort of anything going on, having to play pure wide. Know, that which ideally is all we want. Then the tackle is you know? always going to get on the linebacker. Right. All we, that's all we have. That's exactly what we right. want. No one about that. No one about that. I know because how, how many times can you run plays where a guy can run down the hill like this? Oh God, how hard is that to do? That's hard, right? Yeah. I mean, with that, got, with that kid, we got twelve plays on this fucking film, and it's just like, oh boy, why the fuck are we doing this stuff? Okay, I mean. With that kid, they have to put somewhere he can't. You can't even let that defensive end sniff. Oh, I know. Now you know why we, we're interested. Now we have two things to go with this. And I've got to get you so that you can see where this fits in. First one is to answer your question. Here's the first thing we do when we play Tampa, and they will let some of its back on us, like you're talking. Just turn 
we, we start down and we turn back and we cut this and then we push that guy mm -hmm. to where that is. Do you realize what that fucking hole is right there? When that That's what we've been talking about the last month. Oh, shit. Now, if they, my guy can't always tell. We tell him if he lines up outside, then build a simple all that way. It's when he does this that we get fucked. Because, see, he's mining right there. So what we tell them to do is you start there, and the minute you see him hesitate, you turn back and you cut the dog shit. This guy is so blind in this cut, it is like whew, ass over two kettles. Says we were going through whether to ask block or turn the question. We, we're gonna we're gonna wheel we're gonna wheel and cut. I just worry about that. And I wonder athletically. I, I, because we do so much cutting, I feel like that's the way for us to go, and we know the teams because we can study them from having played them before. Now, if we get it on the sideline and we taught it, then we're, we're pretty good shit. See, what, what, that, what we saw, and that, this is what got, like, as Texas did it with their guy. Not the same deal this year. They would do that, and I think instead of the tackle wheeling back, they would always read it. Wheeling back that way is their tackle now is going to that backer. When you chase here, he's just going to turn and wheel you, and the quarterback's just knifing it. In that same backside, everybody, what would happen there is everybody's gone. The, he, the tackle wheels back on the backer, the end's gone, and now the quarterback's just knifing in that same hole. With well, the that's, a thought. And I was that's, that's a thought, but I wouldn't be tied to him. I wouldn't know whether he'd handed the ball. You don't need to. Because, reading it. because the, reading the quarterback's it. reading that. Oh, end. I would wait. So that go. end, I I see, thought, you're wearing a gun now. That yeah, quarterback's here. It wouldn't fit my two-back rule, so yeah. I, I'd, have, I'd have a problem there that I wouldn't be yeah. able to. If that's the whole thing. We're For me, ideally, I want the ball why, handed. I like the ball handed. Coach, why would it not fit your two-back rules? It would. Because I don't know whether he did or didn't, and the guy's going to chase skinny behind and hit the shot. Oh, I'm just saying, Coach, you don't care, right? You made a man call back but here. But I, I care if this guy can make that cutoff without me getting the helmet on. You're reading them. Oh, no, you're reading them. So now we're saying you made your man call. Okay. So now this is what Texas was doing. So you made your man call. So now you're the tackle. You're hauling balls off the ball. He runs out. I know I know what you're saying, but listen, how do I know what he read? How do I know that he didn't get up there and, and say, I'm going to hand this fucker off? You're reading it. You're reading it. I'm look at him. Honestly. This guy would. I know. I know that. But I'm saying, what if, what if my eyes and his eyes were not on the same theory? Well, what is, what, I, I from, think I'd be better off teaching gun? a gun rule and a, and a two-back rule and that's live with what I've already taught him in a two-back right. rule and teach the gun rule the other that's, way. That's still things we're talking Okay, about. now let me give you one more here because this, this will excite you, and then we'll take a little break here. And, uh, okay, now. This could be two back or three way. And the play call is if it's three wide, nickel eighteen strong. It says possible naked. If it were two backed, it's right there, and we would simply go. 18, force, arc, release, that whole world we're in. Possible naked. Everybody okay so far? Yes. When these two hear possible naked, that's their world. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we are going to the line of scrimmage with the same concepts that we had on the key. If they don't have a threatener, we're coming out with a pass. Mm -hmm. If they have a threatener, we're handing the ball. The only thing we had to be careful of is if our back tackle was a chase linebacker player, mm -hmm. he had to go cut whatever his assignment was. He couldn't, he couldn't chase it because he'd be legal. Because he literally didn't know it was a runner or a pass. Mm -hmm. The rest of the team blocked full speed go get them, because there was nobody downfield anyway. Now what you've just entered into it now is you've given him not just the option of running a keeper by himself, but you've given him a chance to throw combination routes with naked protection. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is very impressive. 
and we just darted into it. So how'd you tell the tackle? You block the play, but you must cut the guy you're responsible for as fast as you can, because you're gonna be on the ground. So if it was a white, if it was a shade nose. I'm gonna go cut the wheel right now. I'm gonna go throw at his legs, two yards downfield, and it'll just no downfield issues ever. Just don't go down. You 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 do your assignment fast, and you cut them as fast as you can. And of course, the faster you go, the faster they come at you, right? I mean, because it looks real. And now you've entered into the best possible world because you gave yourself a keeper that sometimes is right, sometimes is wrong, right? Sometimes it's naked, you don't like it, sometimes you do like it, you got, this, you got to pass just like we're doing, you know, the option read. Well, that's it. Who's, who's making the decisions for the coordinator? The coordinator makes that one. <clears throat> and he also makes naked. the other one. If we learn to read it, then... Possible naked, then, for you. Let me just get this straight. Possible naked says, okay, they're not playing honest. So you're going to naked unless there's two outside. Exactly. Right. Okay. I know, but it's the same concept. Yeah. But you, you call the run, and you're gearing it just like you do with read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? And you can do it out of three wides with nickel. The nickel runs that we just got through running and, and talking I love, about. I love that with the read concept. Yeah. See, our, our whole Makes deal is, is from the gun, it would be this if you wanted to call it that way, but you would just read it. If the end, for whatever exactly reason, was right. stationary, exactly right. you're handing the ball off. You would, if, if that sucker was playing naked, that's, that's crazy. you'd hand the ball You'd hand the ball off, right? If he's chasing. If he's chasing, you come out now, instead of running, you come out with a combination route. Run pass option. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now think about what you just, you, you, you took one, you took the if out of another one, right? Well, we, we like to. T I like. Well, we've always wanted to take the if out of everything for us by being in the gun and reading that defense. Where if you called possible naked right now, and the end was up the field, he's. If you call possible naked, he's going to keep it every time, unless he sees two outside, right? The, the end oh, would make him throw it fast, but we would always have okay, some okay. flat route, some quick route. In case he was yeah. pulled up. In other words, you know, you, there's a lot of ways you can do it, right? You, you can throw out here and yeah. then scissors back. I mean, you, 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 you play that game. he's pulled up right now. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's got to have a place. Because the, the tight end's not a crosser. There ain't no crosser because he's blocking, he's blocking 18 over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have the best of that other world, that's for sure. All right, let's take five here. Let me take two. Hi, girl. Thanks for setting up.